telling me by text message here that it is believed all of the injuries and wounds to these officers are non life threatening, but the situation does continue to develop there in that section of Philadelphia as it was characterized that that gunman had reloaded and was still shooting. Uh, of course, we, we are waiting on official word from Police Commissioner Richard Ross as he is, as he does with all of these things, heads to the hospitals, the trauma units, and the emergency rooms to try and make contact with his officers who have been caught up and involved uh, in, in what has been described a chaotic melee there at that intersection in a, 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 a nice town, Tioga. So I continue to work my sources, but um, that is the latest, an emphasis on non-life threatening, according to the deputy commissioner. I'll send it back to you. Okay, Joe, thank you so much. That is a major emphasis right there from the deputy commissioner himself. All of the wounds of the five police officers that we have been talking about that have been injured in this chaotic scene, all of the wounds are believed to be non-life threatening. Now the business of taking care and finding the gunman. Yeah, absolutely. So three officers we understand at Temple University Hospital right now, one at Einstein Hospital. But again, we can uh, breathe a sigh of relief, thankfully, that all of the injuries that have been sustained in this gunfire are believed to be non-life threatening. So that is at least some good news out of all of this, mm -hmm. this chaotic scene there that is unfolding in the Tioga section of the city. Again, a huge police presence uh, even at this hour, an hour after the initial reports came men of narcotics activity in that area. Police officers responding to that call. Narcotics unit officers, we understand, uh, obviously uh, took on gunfire at that point. Uh, four officers wounded by gunfire. One, we understand through Joe Holden's source, the deputy commissioner, that one of the officers was involved uh, in a car accident and was injured in that way. But at least four officers wounded by gunfire. Three at Temple Hospital, one at Einstein Hospital. Uh, a very, very active scene still unfolding there in Tioga, as you can see that massive police presence that's still there even at this hour. And we've changed our location just a little bit. We were, we're at that major intersection. Now it looks like we're over a side street in the area. Once again, we do not know if someone has been trapped it's there as far as the gunman is concerned, but that's the center of the location that we're looking at right now. Police presence, heavy police presence continues to be on scene. We've seen medics, EMTs, Philadelphia police, uh, Temple police has been out there, the sheriff's department, and it all started around the 3700 block of North Philadelphia, uh, a major, a major intersection. But right now, it seems to be centered around that uh, side street that you saw right there. If you're not familiar with the area, this is what it looks like. There's Erie Avenue there in the center of your screen and North 15th Street, the nice town Tioga section of the city. When all this broke out, as we've been telling you this evening for the last hour, about a little over an hour ago, and you are looking live from Chopper 3. Kim Davis is at Temple University. Hospital. Our Joe Holden is working his sources. Greg Argos is very close to the scene right now. As you might imagine, the media can get but so close because this is dangerous for everyone. We're letting the professionals do what they do, and you're looking at the pros. The brave men and women of, of our Philadelphia Police Department right there. Yeah, and we're, we're going to go back to Greg. Speaking of Greg Argos, mm -hmm. who was a couple of blocks away from where this all unfolded there uh, in Tioga, 3700 block. Greg, you told us you're, you're a couple blocks away. You're along West Erie Avenue or in that area. Uh, it was still appearing to be a very dangerous situation even for you describing it just a short time ago. What are you seeing now? It's still very active, and as you mentioned, Natasha, very dangerous. Police officers who are blocking this side that we're on keep pushing the media and those living here on the block back because as uh, we've been reporting all afternoon, this is still a very active scene. Uh, the actual incidents of these shootings, if you look at that stop sign right there, happened around the corner, just about a few hundred yards from where I'm standing, but you can see officers here on this block every few minutes because this is still an ongoing situation, keep pushing us back. And now you just heard from Joe Holden in his reporting that four of the officers that were shot have non-life threatening injuries. One was wounded apparently as he or she was responding to this scene. Uh, it appears in just the last few seconds though you can see some of the undercover officers, some of the clothed officers uh, moving uh, some of the vehicles and moving away from the scene. It looks like they're not rushing, which is a good indication this might at least uh, be uh, devolved in some sense right now, but we're watching this live as of as you are as well. Within the past, uh, let me give you a little bit of a sort of a timeline as what happened. 
435 this afternoon. That is where radio traffic, standard traffic reported that at least one officer was shot. And that is when, quite frankly, all hell broke loose. Officers from around the city centering their attention on responding as quickly as possible to this scene, the 3700 block of North 15th Street. Once an officer is down, it's basically all hands on deck. Us in the media, to give you the information, we tried getting here as quickly as possible, but as you can imagine, with such a serious situation, it takes time. Roads are closed, crime scene tape goes up, and this is the situ situation right now we're hearing we're hearing possible I could not tell if that was gunshots or something falling um, but there are officers taking cover behind this vehicle right now uh, no, it, it, we're, we're okay from our vantage point right here, but officers are now crouching down behind uh, one of the patrol cars there appear to be about three to four uh, rapid fire shots uh, I cannot see there are officers taking cover now. If you look in the distance here, they're running. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to just stay back here, but we're going to show you what's going on. There are multiple officers running. A, a, a possible. I, I'm just relaying what I'm seeing here. We're taking cover beside a car and uh, a home here on this block. Officers drawing their weapons and keeping us back. There appears to be possibly four, three to four shots being fired as about 30 seconds ago. Officers now back in the defensive position, guys. Uh, there are some that are taking cover. I see behind one of the row homes here and others taking cover behind their, their patrol vehicles. And we're just going to let this play out right now. This is happening in just the past minute. You can see in the distance there, Matt, I don't know if you can show it, uh, one of the responding vehicles with, it, with its lights and sirens heading northbound here. Uh, and like I mentioned, we heard what appeared to be possibly three or four shots just uh, going off. Uh, that is what I interpreted. Uh, the officers here on scene took defensive positions. It seems to at least be slightly getting calmer, though you do see officers running uh, down this block here. We are about uh, a block or so from the 3700 block of North 15th Street. Uh, there are more more shots are being fired right now. Those, those, those multiple shots are being fired. I don't know if you can hear that. It does not appear that it's happening directly on this street. Um, but there is something happening right now. I don't know if this is officers who are engaging with the suspect or the suspect possibly engaging with officers right now but we've heard now two volleys of gunshots one happening about two minutes ago it appeared to be three or four and just another about 10 seconds ago officers taking defensive positions there were about at least 40 pull back if you can uh, there were about 40 officers gathered in this intersection right in front of me uh, which is very close to where this shooting happened uh, they've all retreated uh, either either to homes uh, row homes here on this block or behind their police vehicles we've seen multiple officers running and taking cover Fortunately, we're staying mid-block back here as this all is unfolding. But so far, guys, in the past five minutes or so, we've had two volleys of gunfire. Um, and this is the situation right now, actually a pretty scary one. To give you just an idea of exactly where, where we are, we're on the 3600 block of North Sindemhan Street at the intersection that you're looking at where the stop signs are. That is West Erie Avenue. This all happened on the 3700 block of North 15th Street, which is, I believe, one block to my east. So one block east, and that appears to be approximately where the sounds of the gunshots, the two volleys, uh, have just occurred. I'm going to pause here one second just to see if I can hear anything. I just heard. Hey, hey Greg, while you're pausing, make sure you. Right now, uh, Natasha. While you're pausing, make sure you and the crew are also in a safe position. Okay? Make sure you and the crew are in a safe position while you are pausing. We're midway down the block. 
Yes, Yuki, thank you. We are taking um, you know, precautionary measures, of course. We're halfway down the block behind the police crime tape, and we are near a, 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 um, a row home here, uh, which can provide some cover, but uh, the officers that were in this intersection uh, in just the past five minutes have all retreated, uh, and there were two volleys of gunfire. It appears that things are settling down a little bit. I did not see where exactly that gunfire was coming from. It was clear, I heard it, and it seemed very close. Obviously, like I've been reporting, the actual shooting scene, the actual shooting scene, guys, is one block to my east, to the east, uh, to my right, or my, 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 my right, your left. Um, and that is where the initial calls came through. Uh, Yuki, Natasha, like I said, there was a large police presence, and you can still see a large police presence. They were all gathered, the officers gathering in that intersection up until about five minutes ago when two volleys of gunfire broke out and everyone took defensive positions. Um, so this is going to go on for some time. Uh, as we've been reporting, four officers have been shot with non-life-threatening injuries, that according to Joe Holden, one, in, one officer, we're told, was wounded as he or she was responding to this scene. Still a very chaotic, intense situation right now with active gunfire. I do not know. I did not witness the gunfire. At my it came from police or the suspect that apparently uh, may be still unapprehended, uh, not in police custody just yet. Uh, but right now, you can see that officer on the right, Matt, if you could, uh, I'm working with Matt Marano, our photographer, photojournalist. Uh, you can see him taking a defensive position around the corner as well. And, and we're just staying back because as important as it is to get everyone the information, of course, we don't want to get injured in any of this. Uh, but police officers at this scene, at least, which is right around the corner from the main situation, um, are taking defensive positions as we speak. These two volleys of gunfire erupting in just the past five minutes or so. Incredibly tense situation, especially since from our vantage point right here, Go ahead. Yeah, we just wanted to interject. Obviously, we're so happy that you guys are safe at this point. We want, we want you to stay safe out there, so we're happy that you're, you're taking cover and, and protecting yourself as well. But we also want to reiterate the fact that this has been a volatile situation from the very beginning with officers saying that even when they got there, even after the shooting of the four police officers, that they were still taking, taking fire. They were taking fire even at that point. So obviously, this is still evolving. Uh, and it's still a very active situation there. It would appear that if you are hearing gunfire still, even now, that this suspect or suspect uh, suspects are still out there in that area somewhere. Uh, but this, has, they've been taking fire from the very beginning, from what we understand. It does appear just like you mentioned there, Natasha, that there is still an active situation, an active volley between police and sus and suspect or suspects here at the 3700 block of North 15th Street. The good thing right now, if you can take a live look right there, you can see officers just walking uh, down West Erie Street. They don't appear to be retreating, which is a great sign because when those volleys of gunfire erupted, everyone took uh, position. They, they, they went to a safe position to, uh, of course, keep themselves safe and possibly engage in that suspect. Um, that right there, the gentleman you see wearing the white shirt, he's a commanding officer of some sort, perhaps a captain. And those are the officers that are in control of this situation. Um, massive police presence. I want to reiterate just uh, how large of a police presence this is. Just on this intersection alone, uh, at one point, I can, I mean, I'm looking at at least two or three dozen clothed and plain clothed officers gathering here. And this is just one intersection of a very large crime scene. Once again, this all starting around 4.35 this afternoon with a report of one officer shot. And since then, active gunfire, four officers confirmed by CBS3 have been injured, fortunately with non-life threatening injuries. A fifth officer injured perhaps as he or she was responding to the call. And that response was incredible. Shock and awe, perhaps. So many officers arriving to the scene from all directions of the city. We saw at least two dozen officers in their marked and unmarked police cars arriving here at the scene. But right now, it seems to have at least calmed down here close to the 3700 block of North 15th Street. Guys, of course, we'll stay here on scene. We'll stay safe and we'll provide you any updates if they happen here. But hopefully this wraps up soon and that suspect or suspects are placed under arrest.
Hey, Greg, you're obviously in a residential area there. From your vantage point, are people taking heed and sheltering in place? Are they looking out the windows? What about the people in the community? I'll just spin around here. You can see folks are all gathered here where we're placed. Uh, people are on their cell phones. Uh, there are some people who are inside their homes, but for the most part, everyone is staying behind uh, this police tape. This is as close as you can get uh, to where the action is happening right now. Uh, but at least a few dozen people from this neighborhood have gathered. In today's day and age, everyone has one of these and everyone recording what's going on. Uh, when the few volleys of gunfire happened, of course, everyone sort of took cover and move to the at least to the sides of the homes here uh, to give themselves a little bit of protection in case anything happened. Police are very um, proactive in making sure that everyone stays safe, of course, and they've moved us back since we've arrived at least twice. We were very close to that intersection when this all when we first arrived here about an hour ago or so, I should say about 45 minutes ago or so, um, and ever since we've been moved back, which is a good thing, quite frankly, because uh, this is still an active scene. I'm also thinking about the people that live in those homes, the row homes behind you that are probably in their homes right in the thick of it all. That concerns me as well, but I'm sure the police have them in their homes. And, and Yuki. Yuki, if you can see, I just want to show you from this angle, Matt, I don't know if you can point out, that is one of the row homes. You can see officers actually taking position on that person's front porch in front of that home. I mean, you can count them. At least I see a dozen officers. So there are people. I mean, this is a very, I mean, we're in North Philadelphia right now, Tioga section of Philly. Very populated, very dense section of our city. And you see, I mean, basically right now, a, a massive crime scene multiple blocks and uh, hundreds of officers, I would assume, throughout this, this, this area um, are here to try to resolve and end this situation. You know, when active gunfire is happening uh, between police and suspects in a heavily populated city, I mean, you know what could happen. Uh, innocent bystanders could get hit. Officers could get hurt, of course. And that is what officers are trying to prevent. They're trying to end this safely and peacefully. Of course, with four officers shot, that peace has already left <laughs> the area. But fortunately, or hopefully, no one else will get injured in all of this. Though there is, at least in the past 20 minutes or so, active gunfire happening right around the corner here. So police taking defensive positions, using people's front porches to... Um, to basically, uh, you know, monitor the situation. If you look up there, you can actually see an officer crouching behind that front porch uh, with about two dozen or one dozen, at least one dozen officers in front of that home. Uh, those officers all took defensive cover positions when those volleys uh, rang out a few minutes ago, but it seems at least right now that there haven't been any shots fired. Uh, that could change on a moment's notice. We were just reporting um, about the situation when we heard uh, those two volleys. So uh, we're going to give it back to you guys there in the studio. But right now, very tense situation. Uh, the community gathering here and police making sure as best as they can, everyone stays safe who are in these homes and in this community as this incredibly dramatic scene is unfolding right now here in the Tioga section of Philadelphia. Natasha okay, Yuki. Just a very dangerous situation for everyone in that area. No the question. residents, the police, uh, and no again, question. a very active scene there. Greg, thank you so much. We want you guys to stay safe out there as well. You're watching so, live coverage, live coverage here on CBS 3. Gunfire in North Philadelphia, four officers shot, one officer injured. We're still waiting to find out the extent of that injury, and it all started around 4.30 or so this evening after a call to the narcotics division and that's when everything chaos broke loose uh, joe holden was telling us some of his contacts described it as a boil over a sh sheer chaos and you're looking at what's left of it right now and it's still still not resolved yeah certainly not resolved yet as you heard greg argo say that he w appeared to be hearing gunfire even as as close as a few minutes ago actually in that area in the west erie avenue area there just around the corner from where this scene all started in the 3700 block of north 15th street in tioga
a very frightening scene, as you can imagine, for residents there who are pretty much locked down inside their homes or being kept at bay as far as possible as this scene plays out. Still a very, very dangerous situation there for police officers, for residents. We understand also now that Commissioner Richard Ross, Mayor Kinney, uh, are heading to Temple University Hospital, may be there at this point. We know that DA Larry Krasner is at Temple University Hospital as well. That is where everyone is gathering because the bulk of the officers were taken there. Uh, four officers shot, one injured, possibly in a car accident responding to this scene. Four officers shot with non-life-threatening injuries. Three of them are at Temple University Hospital, which again is very, very close mm -hmm. to where this scene unfolded. And Natasha, I'm just receiving word that um, we were still going to uh, confirm this, but uh, John McNesby of the Fraternal Order of Police has told one of our crews that the total is now six, six officers that have been shot and or injured. We know one has been injured, but now John McNesby of the FOP has told one of our crews that the total is six. We're still working to confirm that. And uh, you see the uh, wording right there at the bottom of your screen. Six Philadelphia police officers shot. Once again, one was injured uh, going to responding to the mm -hmm. scene, we understand. And we're still trying to find out. We're still trying to find out about the sixth officer uh, from John McNesby to find out if he was either shot, he or she was either shot or injured. So this situation continues. And again, this is pretty much a lockdown mode for the residents in that area. Also to nearby Temple University Hospital. We know that some of their facilities are in lockdown mode as well at this point as police continue to try to navigate this scene, which is stretching now for several blocks, as you can see there with the school Scores and scores of police officers who are flooding that area and have flooded that area this afternoon. Again, this all came in as a drug activity call in that neighborhood. We're not exactly sure how this all evolved into what it has now with six police officers from what we understand, uh, shot or injured in some way responding to this narcotics activity in that area at about 4.30 this afternoon. Let's go back to the Criminal Justice Center now and check in with our Joe Holden. I believe, Joe, you have some new information from your sources. I do, guys. Good evening once again, and we are getting information, official word from the Philadelphia Police Department that this active firefight, so this gun battle, is, in their words, still ongoing, and they describe that the male shooter was still inside the property. I also have confirmation from at least two more sources high ranking with the Philadelphia Police Department. Confirmation is that none of the injuries appear to be life threatening at this point. So that is continued good information despite what is a horrible afternoon here in the city of brotherly love. Now I spoke to uh, communications staffers for Mayor Jim Kenney within the last 20 minutes. They confirmed that the mayor of course has been briefed and he has continued to monitor the situation. At last check, he was on his way to Temple University emergency room to be with the police commissioner and to be with other high ranking law enforcement officials here in the city of Philadelphia. And as I'm looking at images and visuals from the scene playing out here, uh, high above the, uh, the neighborhood there, it, it appears that again, police maintain an extremely highly concentrated defensive posture. Listening to Greg's live report was bone chilling because it was suggested that police continued to try to obviously bring this to an end and as their efforts continue on the ground there as we are watching from the air there appears to have been no let up and no stand down in this vicinity as we are watching uh, and describing these moments for you. Uh, my sources again and it's important to emphasize emphasize that at the uh, moment of those injured, and we are now reporting that sure six Philadelphia police officers have been either wounded or injured in this afternoon's gun battle and melee in the city's nice town Tioga section, that all of those injuries appear to be non-life threatening, and at least one of the injured was injured, those injuries sustained while on route. Greg Argos is going to bring us up to speed with breaking information there. Greg. 
Uh, Joe, uh, thank you so much, guys. We are actually walking now on North 15th Street. If you can hear me, sorry, uh, a, a volley of gunfire just erupted in the past 10 seconds or so. We're one block to the east. The actual call, the initial call, is on this street. We're going to go as close as we can. My colleague, photojournalist Anka Patel, is right here, and he told us to get over to this side. Sorry for being out of breath here, because this is a where a lot is happening right now. We just heard that other volley of gunfire, and you can see Philadelphia police taking that defensive position. Let me just get over here real quick. And taking that defensive position right here along 15th Street and Erie Avenue along the side of the wall right now. Uh, Ankit, uh, the photojournalist I'm with, said that they just went into this home. Uh, this is an incredibly tense situation. I just want us to make sure I'm talking to my, my photojournalist, Matt. If, you know, if more gunfire erupts, we're going to take a defensive position behind this red car in front of us. But right now, I'm told by our second photojournalist crew on scene within the past two minutes, as we were, Joe tossed to me live, um, there was police activity, police entering the building where this uh, this suspect might be still holed up uh, in. Uh, we've heard another volley of fire. I would say, uh, what would you say, four or five shots erupted. We took um, cover, of course, and uh, those shots have subsided, but you can see if we, uh, I, I think you're looking live right now at the corner of Erie Street. Uh, we are on 15th now. We were one block to the west. Uh, this is the exact location where the initial call came for the one officer shot. Uh, as you just heard from my colleague Joe Holden, that is now six officers uh, who have been injured. We believe uh, perhaps five have been shot. Fortunately, Joe is reporting that these are non-life-threatening injuries, but uh, I'm telling you, uh, this is a an incredible six I'm sorry six shot we've confirmed uh, and right now it appears uh, from my colleague uh, who was here moments before I was um, that the police have entered the building where the suspect or suspects uh, is currently are currently inside uh, we're going to just keep this uh, live picture going as, as far as we can I would estimate uh, that there are at least on this side of the home uh, two dozen officers we see members of the SWAT team uh, I see commanding officers, I see Philadelphia um, bike officers, Temple Police, um, and within the two minutes uh, that we've arrived here, uh, they have just entered the building. Uh, that was followed by a, a series of what appeared to be gunshots. Um, every one of the officers, as you can tell, taking that defensive position. They're not walking in the middle of the street, of course. Uh, this is an active scene. Uh, their attention on this block especially is focused on apprehending whoever is inside, whoever has been firing at police now for the past hour and 20 minutes. This all began at 4.35, approximately 4.35 this afternoon with that initial report and incredible police response. Officers from all throughout the city, their priority when someone is shot in their line of duty, especially an officer, is to get to the scene and provide assistance and get whoever is shooting at them in custody. That has not been the case. There's at least been now three rounds of Go ahead, Yuki. I was going to say, I'm sorry to, to do interrupt you very quickly. Uh, can you tell from your vantage point if it's that corner row home that these officers are centering on or not? Because the officer, officers that we are looking at right now are basically standing and waiting for something to happen. I can't tell if their eyes are on that corner row home, that uh, burgundy type row home there on the corner or not. I don't know if you can tell or not from your vantage point. Yes. Yeah, so. From what I can tell from where I'm standing, I'm standing mid-block on North 15th Street between Lenox Street and Pacific Street. That's my exact location right here. Uh, 36, I'm standing in front of a house, 3636 North 15th Street. It appears that the officers are focused 
I cannot tell it if it's this building right here to my left, uh, the brick building on the corner, which would be on 15th Street uh, at Absolutely. the corner of Erie, is, or if they're focused uh, across the street on uh, that maroon or burgundy building that you mentioned. Uh, but you can see the officers here are gathered, SWAT members, plain clothes, and unmarked, or I should say, um, undercover officers all gathering here at the corner of this building. Um, I, but Yuki, from my vantage point, to be direct with you, I, I can't tell exactly what building was breached, at least from, from where I'm standing right here. But the bottom line, they're in, they're in there. Wherever, wherever it is, they are in there. Yeah, and we understand, Greg, that we're also being told to obviously, uh, because this is a fluid and very dangerous situation, not to give any exact address at this point, because obviously, if they're still taking on gunfire, if this is still a very volatile and violent situation, we want to be very careful about that. So we understand it's definitely something that's happening there along Erie Avenue. We can certainly see the, the incredible police presence there alongside that one building. Uh, and we can understand why they, they are keeping you as far away as they are and making sure that other residents are not caught up in the midst of all of this that's happening right now. So uh, again, I, I can hear the adrenaline in your voice. I know what it's like to be on a scene, maybe not one this dangerous at this point, but I, I certainly understand uh, and, and totally understand what you're going through at this point in terms of trying to get us the information as well as trying to stay safe as well. Absolutely, and the key is is to remain safe. Of course, if we spin around just real quick, I just want to show some of the members of the community here of who've gathered. Uh, we are mid-block down North 15th Street here, and, and this is near the area where this um, suspect or the people who committed, possibly committed these crimes um, are basically still holed up. Um, we're waiting to see if, if anyone comes out in custody. We're not sure. Um, who is inside, or if there are any other injuries inside, if there's anyone in that facility or that home um, that is injured. Um, but right now, this is the center of attention for the Philadelphia Police Department, the SWAT team, and all of the other agencies that have responded to this call around 4.30 this afternoon, dragging now into uh, near 6 o'clock. Great. Thank you so much. Stand by, stand by, because we definitely will get back to you. But to reiterate, six officers, a half dozen officers, have been shot. None of the injuries, we are told, appear to be life-threatening. One of the officers may have sustained some type of injury going to the scene or involved with some type of car, but six officers are involved in this. It all started around 4.30 on a narcotics call. Yeah, the 3700 block of uh, North 15th Street there. You can see Chopper 3 has been hovering above this scene since it all happened. We saw early on one suspect who was taken into custody who appeared to be resisting arrest at that point. He had to be lifted into the police car uh, and was taken away from that scene. That was uh, shortly before before five o'clock or so, we have continued to hear Greg Argo say that he can hear from where he is, which is about a block or so away from where the initial scene is. He has continuously heard gunfire, and from the very beginning, we were hearing that officers were taking fire from the very beginning. So this is really not de-escalated, it appears, uh, but so much even after an hour and a half or so of this scene unfolding there. A, a narcotics call is what brought police officers to this scene. Six officers were shot, we understand, as Yuki was just saying. And we got that once One again from John McNesby. Uh, Fraternal Order of Police. Exactly. Yes, six, President. six officers were shot, non life threatening injuries, thank goodness. But again, what is happening now is that this is still a very active and dangerous scene, not just for the police officers there, but also the people they are trying to serve and protect, which are the residents in that community, which are pretty much either mm -hmm. holed up in their homes at this point or trying to figure out what is happening. Uh, and they're telling people to stay away from this area. They've said that from the very beginning. This is not an area you want to go anywhere near at this point. Uh, again, especially because we just got a tweet. The police are tweeting that the suspect is still firing. I don't know if Greg can hear that or not, if it's coming from that location or not. But according to uh, Philadelphia Police Department tweets, the suspect is still firing his gun. So they're standing by and they're watching who knows 
Hopefully he will run out of ammunition. Hopefully he does not hit anyone. But this situation is ongoing and very, very active. Yeah, police still in a very defensive pose there. As you could see, many of them either crouching behind cars at one point or pretty much holed up alongside buildings trying to keep out of the way of any gunfire at this point. Uh, many residents we saw were, were blocks away just trying to get an idea as to what was happening. But again, police keeping them at bay as well. As you can imagine, no one else wants to to be injured in this case. No one else police are hoping will be injured in this situation. But six police officers shot here in the city at 430 this afternoon responding to a drug activity call, a narcotics call there in the nice town Tioga section in North Philadelphia. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney has been briefed on everything. He's on his way to the hospital if he is not there already. Our Kim Davis is at the hospital as well. One of the hospitals, I believe she's at Temple mm -hmm. University Hospital. And Commissioner Ross will be making a statement soon once he finds out more about the situation because it, it is, it's still active and he's getting information as we are giving information right now. So it might be a little time before he steps to the mic, if at all. But we are definitely keeping an eye on that situation. Yeah, so right now, obviously, we're concerned about the police officers who mm -hmm. were shot and injured at this point. We're concerned about this neighborhood and the, the folks that are in that neighborhood who are still, again, being holed up at this point while police try to de-escalate the situation while they try to get this yeah, Suspect or suspects uh, in custody at this point. One person's already been taken into custody. Obviously, they are still engaging another person or other people at this point. Hold up. On Erie Avenue. That is why you still see such an incredible police presence at this point in that area. And looking at that picture, it may seem possibly maybe a little cloudy or something to you, but I understand that our we may be using a very long lens because I understand our our chopper, chopper three, has been told to back up all the helicopters in the air, back up just a little bit as to not comp not to compromise uh, the situation. So that's the situation there. That's why you're looking at this picture. It might seem a little as we call it in the business soft or cloudy, it's not as sharp, but we are over top of the situation. You can see the lights, the sirens, you can see that uh, right in front, and no one is moving because this is an ongoing situation. Yeah, uh, again, Greg Argos and our cameraman out there, a couple of camera guys, uh, Ankit Patel, Matt Mariano, uh, trying to stay safe as well. We want everybody in this situation. Uh, haven't seen something like this, Yuki, in a really long time where we're seeing this kind of uh, violence play out, uh, you know, in, in a city neighborhood where we're actually seeing it after police officers have been shot. The situation still certainly not under control at this point at until they get a suspect or suspects into custody. So that is why uh, this is still a very dangerous situation an hour and a half after the initial call came in at 4.30 or so. A call, a narcotics call that went very, very badly. And we're watching the result of it right now. And it happened all around when people were getting off work. People were moving around uh, in the temple area, maybe from school. And a very active time of the evening and even more so. As Greg mentioned a little while ago, all hell broke, hell broke loose around 4.30. And speaking of Greg, let's check in with him right now near the scene. Greg? And Yuki, like you mentioned, we are very close to this scene, a very active scene happening right now. Uh, in fact, uh, this is where the police have gathered here near this corner and about down uh, a block from where I'm standing, there is the Philadelphia SWAT team. They have gathered and we have heard active gunfire within the past 20 minutes happening here near this scene. And actually right now, uh, two shots were just fired. You can hear possibly some of the folks, uh, the members of this community, uh, the neighborhood uh, reacting as well. There is active gunfire happening right now. We're going to just keep with the live picture. Uh, that You're looking at the SWAT team. We're not going to give our location here, but we are, as you can tell, very close to this scene. Philadelphia, Philadelphia SWAT and uh, large clothed police presence here for engaging, apparently engaging the suspect uh, as as we speak, it appears that they are in front of a home here in the Tioga section of Philadelphia. This all unfolding at 4.35 this afternoon or thereabout. And since I've been live a, a few times this afternoon, uh, we've heard now this is the fourth back and forth, the fourth uh, volley of gunfire between Philadelphia police and at least one suspect we have.
have confirmed six Philadelphia police officers have been shot. Uh, still an active situation. We don't know if there are any more injuries, but with active gunfire, of course, there could be. Uh, Joe Holden and the Fraternal Order of Police telling us, uh, fortunately, that none of these injuries are life-threatening. That could change, of course, as active gunfire is taking place right now here um, in the Tioga section, North Philadelphia section of Philadelphia. We're staying back. Uh, there are officers in defensive positions. I believe you're looking at the SWAT vehicle right now, correct, Matt? Uh, and we're just showing the scene as it's unfolding. Uh, hectic. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, a scary situation, uh, a hectic one, um, one where uh, multiple officers, of course, are thinking about their brothers and possibly their sisters uh, who have been injured today, but they're also trying to neutralize and arrest the suspect, which is basically this person or people wreaking havoc on the city of Philadelphia, specifically North Philadelphia right now. Uh, I am in a community of at least two or three dozen people who have gathered with their cell phones showing what's going on. People are staying back, of course, uh, but we are going to widen out the shot right now, uh, just giving you uh, the situation situation as it's unfolding. We don't want to, we don't know, to be frank with you, if uh, anyone who's committing these crimes is watching um, our broadcast. And so we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to be showing specific uh, locations or talking about them. But we are in the Tioga section of Philadelphia. This is where those emergency calls began broadcasting over police radio at 435. Philadelphia SWAT in full gear with their town tactical equipment engaging the suspect over the past hour. A very tense situation, quite frankly, a one that I've never been in in this, in this light. I've been, a, unfortunately, plenty of shootings, but nothing uh, this serious where there's active gunfire. And I can tell you uh, the priority is keeping uh, the officers who are on scene safe, the folks who have gathered to watch this, those in the community living on this block. Imagine this being your block here, guys, in the Tioga section of Philadelphia, um, when there is such a uh, there's a gun battle essentially in North Philadelphia as we're speaking. And Greg, uh, I can tell you that I've heard it, and it's ongoing right now between. Go ahead. You it's, can... okay. it's ongoing. It's active gunfire. You were talking about keeping people safe. I want to reiterate to you, they have protective gear on. The police department, the SWAT team, we've seen the helmets on the tight shot. They have protective gear on. Stray bullets can fly. So please, please, you and the community. Keep yourself in a defensive position and stay safe. We are looking, well, before I get back to you, Greg, I understand I'm being told that this, the video that people at home are seeing on the right, family members are starting, you're looking at a live picture, family members are starting to come to the hospital now, but once again, at Temple University Hospital, where our Kimberly Davis is, and so we're going to stay on top of that as well. Right, but once again, the right injuries, now. the injuries that uh, we have heard about, the sh people, officers being shot and the one injured, they are not life-threatening at the moment. Okay. And we're, the moment, and we're getting six officers, according to FOP to to President side, right? John McNesby. Yeah, six officers shot, according to FOP President John McNesby. Uh, Non-life-threatening injuries for all of them, which is the good news there. And we were just seeing that shot from Temple University. Some family members were getting. Mm -hmm. into the hospital at this point to check on at least three of the officers that we understand that were taken to Temple University Hospital. One was taken to Einstein Hospital. Uh, we see Greg Argos there who's at, at the scene that's still playing out a very uh, fluid and dangerous situation. A gun battle in North Philadelphia that's playing out there. SWAT team members that had their guns trained on what appeared to be a row house there uh, near that Erie Avenue area near where this all initially unfolded the 3700 block of North 15. Street at about 4:30 this afternoon. So there is still very much activity there in the neighborhood where this all happened. This is the activity we're seeing there, off to the right of our screen here at Temple University. And Hospital. the gentleman with the uh, phone to his ear—that appears to be that's John Bignesby of the FOP. FOP. He continues. He continues to get information that he is uh, putting out on Twitter. That he's talking to his his coworkers. Mm -hmm. and he's giving us the information. He's the one that told us uh, there are six officers now. So he's on top of the situation as well, taking care of his and looking after 
the men and women of the police department. Yeah, and we're just hearing too that we were just seeing uh, just a shot a short time ago saw what looked to be several family members running into mm -hmm. the hospital. Now we're of course hearing that these are non-life threatening injuries, but, but we they still may not have heard that. Yeah, they exactly. may not have heard that. We still right. don't know the gravity of where they were injured, right. what type okay, of injuries that. they have sustained at this point, and no matter what, family members are going to rush to the hospital and they try are to so check on their loved ones. Right, one. exactly. Took the words right out my mouth. They are concerned about their loved ones, as are we, as are we in this day and age. This is something to see. You are looking live. If you just joined us, it is 610. We have been covering this shootout in North Philadelphia that all started with a narcotics call around 430 this afternoon in the North Philadelphia area in Tioga. Gunshots ensued. A massive police presence also ensued. It was described as a boil over sheer chaos in North Philadelphia. And now you are looking at the end result of it. it's not the end. You're looking at the result of it now that oh, about an hour and a half ago. And these officers are just waiting, waiting as a SWAT team in about the middle of the block just in front of them is trying to wait this situation out. Yeah, and again, exchanges of gunfire being heard there with our Greg Argos hearing it for himself. Uh, of course, he is trying to stay as far back as possible, and police are keeping everyone at bay at this point, and they're trying to protect themselves as well and other community members. The SWAT team, you can't see from this uh, this shot here, but mm -hmm. if you look a little past that little that row house there to the left, you can see SWAT team members that pretty much have their, their military-type gear, in sure. a sense, right Right there in the middle of the street, guns trained on what appears to be a row house there in that area, just a block away from where all of this activity transpired at about 4.30 or so this afternoon. The drug activity call that, that set this all in motion earlier this afternoon at about 4.30 where the officers were shot at that scene. This is definitely ground zero right now, and we're going to stay here until something is resolved or until we hear from Mayor, Mayor Kenny and or Commissioner Ross, who are on their way to the hospital. They are being debriefed, I'm sure, right now. And our helicopters, Chopper 3, is in the air and has been moved back. But we can still see any activity that you are looking at live, live right now at 6:11 in the evening. A very active time, a very active time around the city, around around the area, around the area when it comes to people getting off work, when it comes to people leaving school. But this area is complete gridlock in Center City, Philadelphia right now because no one's getting in, no one's getting out. Our Joe Holden has been out on the scene since this started, and I understand, Joe, from the CJC, you have more information for us. I do, guys. Good evening once again, and I've been talking with my sources about the logistics of what is next. The most important element of all of this is concluding what has now been going on for almost one hour and 45 minutes. Police confirming the gun battle still persists, as you heard in Greg Argos' live shot, the volley of gunfire between police and the shooter on the other side of all of this. That is still unfolding. We saw from the air one person taken into custody. Uh, the second person either going to be taken into custody or, or otherwise, according to police sources. The information I'm getting about the logistics that I mentioned, right now we are aware uh, the police commissioner, Mayor Kenny, um, at Temple University Emergency Room right now, and other high-ranking law enforcement officials from across the city and county of Philadelphia huddling right now, meeting with the wounded. Again, we've been reporting their injuries believed to all be non-life-threatening. Of the five we've tallied to be shot and the one said to have been involved in a collision of some sort on the way to the shooting again those injuries and wounds classified as non-life threatening what is going to happen from here on out according to sources is they're getting their notes together they're comparing information and making sure that before they step before the cameras and the microphones that they have the freshest and most accurate information to pass along to all of us we mentioned about the chopper pulling back um, that was at the request of philadelphia police so that we do not give any upper hand or divulge locations or presence to uh, those who are on the opposite end of this entire investigation. So police do not want us revealing or detailing information about locations for officer safety, and we are honoring that. Um, again, awaiting a news conference that could happen at any minute. These usually unfold rather quickly. It usually features the police commissioner, the mayor, the FOP, and other high-ranking brass of the Philadelphia Police Department. Um, we cannot underemphasize and underscore um, the seriousness of this afternoon and
and what it did unfold at that major intersection there in that section of the city where so many people could have been in harm's way. And in fact, it was six Philadelphia police officers who were injured to a degree, again, classified to be non-life threatening, but let alone the fact that this happened to begin with. And my police sources saying that it was chaos. We've used the words of a, of a boil over. That's what the situation was like. And we know that as these police officials were trying to get into that area, they described frustration and more chaos trying to reach into that zone. Uh, this area that they've set up this perimeter and to an other location that they uh, tracked a what is believed to be potentially a second gunman in all of this. Forgive me if I do have to look at my phone as I'm I'm feeling it uh, go off with messages and information from sources. Um, it looks like the Philadelphia Police Department has confirmed an initial incident was for a warrant service at that location. A warrant service there and again our sources is saying that this was a warrant service initiated by the narcotics unit of the Philadelphia Police Department. Um, that is the latest from what we have here at the uh, Criminal Justice Center. I will, of course, be back in touch with you as soon as I learn more information. You can, Natasha, I'll send it back to you. And once again, thank you, Joe. Once again, you did say that the officials are meeting with the wounded and their families. That is our understanding that the police commissioner okay. at least an hour and a half ago was on his way to Temple University ER. I spoke to the mayor's office within the last 45 minutes. They said the same. The mayor had been briefed on all of this and that he too was making his way to Temple University. All right, so we're learning a lot more now, Joe, in, in light of your sources there, mm -hmm. that, that this, again, was the police department confirming a warrant service was being initiated there by the narcotics unit at 4.30 this afternoon there in the 3700 block of North 15th Street. That is what sparked all of this violence that we've seen today uh, with six police officers shot. We understand uh, at least all of them non-life-threatening injuries. One of them possibly could have been injured in, in the mm -hmm. car accident trying mm -hmm. to get to the scene. Uh, but again, we're awaiting that news conference where we'll get a lot more information about what has transpired. Commissioner Richard Ross, Mayor Kinney, uh, DA Larry Krasner, all of them expected to be a part of this press conference coming up shortly. We can only imagine they're at Temple University Hospital where most of the officers were rushed to because that is the closest hospital to this scene. And we're right there at the trauma center. You can see the shot there on your left of the situation at the trauma center at Temple University Hospital. And you can see many of the police officers waiting to find out themselves, our men and women in blue and white, waiting to find out how their comrades, how their brethren are doing at this moment. And this is a very, very tense situation for them as well, because this is family. Yeah. This is family. And this is still a scene that is very much not under control at this point. At I mean, that not scene all. there in North Philadelphia, there in Nice Town, Tioga, a gun battle playing Tyoga out shot. even now, an hour and 45 oh, minutes after the initial uh, reports of police officers shot. They are still trying to gain control of the situation by uh, apprehending this suspect or suspects who appears to be holed up in a row house there uh, near I'm this scene it. where it all started, near it Erie Avenue. Uh, you saw some of the the, the officers there who were still in a defensive pose even now at that at that location we saw SWAT team members there who are are pretty much sitting there in the middle of the street with their guns drawn and trained mm -hmm. on a row house there as they're still taking fire and trying to protect themselves as well as the residents in that community who are holed up inside their homes they at this train hour. for it all the time and now we are seeing it live as they are using what they have learned as they come up through the academy and, and go out on the street this is what it's all about for them, especially when it comes to the ones that they love in their families, the ones that help protect and serve our great city. And now this has happened going on almost two hours now, Natasha, as you mentioned, they were all there, the medics, the EMTs, the Philadelphia Police Department, Temple Police is helping out. They are assisting the Sheriff's Department is there as well in the Tioga section of the city in North Philadelphia. Our Greg Argos is very close to the scene. He has been following this. He has shown us the SWAT team about a block and a half away. They are poised. They are ready to strike. If they haven't struck already, the community is behind caution tape. They cannot get any closer, and Greg even said that the people in the homes around where this suspect or suspect is, they are sheltered in place, waiting for this 
all to end. Yeah, we just saw at least a dozen or so police officers who were, were pretty much on a resident's porch there mm -hmm. in that neighborhood as they, they were trying to take cover as well and trying to, to protect themselves as well as residents in that neighborhood. So this is a very dangerous situation that's playing out here on the streets of Philadelphia there in that Tioga neighborhood. Uh, scores of police officers, as we said, once you hear about a police officer down, police officer shot, and six in this case, uh, right. police officers from all over the city drop everything. They rush to that scene, and that is why you're seeing this massive police presence that has still not been uh, de-escalated at this point. The situation is still uh, very dangerous, very active, and still, you know, just a, a very serious situation. At active this is the key word, Natasha. I just got word from our producers and everyone working hard in our newsroom that just a minute ago, the police tweeted out that the suspect still firing, which makes you believe what, what type of weapon does he have? Because he's been firing, or this person or persons have been firing for almost two hours, off and on now. But just got a tweet about a minute ago that the suspect is still firing. This is this is far from being over. You can see there is no movement on the screen to your right, on the video to your right. They know where they are going. They know who they are after. But now it is just seems like a waiting game. Yeah, and now we're also yeah, yeah, hearing from Philadelphia some, police that I there are several other being... officers that are being treated right now for non gunshot type injuries. We're not exactly sure how they may have been injured, but again, we have seen the flurry of activity there at that scene. We've seen officers running. We've seen them, you know, trying to either get to a scene, trying to get to this suspect. Uh, so we can only imagine uh, just the intensity that's playing out there on that street and with all these officers who are really just trying to get to this suspect to stop him from firing at this point. This is a continuing gun battle that's playing out nearly two hours after the initial officers were shot at that scene. You mentioned running. We saw officers at Greg Argos's location running away from Greg toward a certain scene. Then about 20 seconds later, they were running back. So a lot, a lot is going on right now. They're trying to take control of the situation, but do they have a plan? It's, it's tactical. They have a plan in order to get this person or person in the custody. And we're still getting information yeah, right now. We are getting information. This is just a programming note, just, mm. just to pass along that the CBS Evening News, you can join them at 7 p.m. on the CW Philly. Of course, this is our priority here in mm -hmm. Philadelphia mm -hmm. to stay on this scene to stay with this situation that is still unfolding at this hour. CBS Evening News can be seen at 7. Right now at 622, we are here in Philadelphia as we are continuing to watch a gun battle play out with Philadelphia police after six of their own were shot. You're looking at ground zero, we believe, right now. And those officers on the left side of the screen there have not moved. They are almost in the same position they were in when Greg was doing his report. So they are standing by. They are ready. They are right at that intersection right there near Erie yeah, Avenue. Yeah, and just they're just waiting. There's a wider shot that we call it in the business. They are waiting to see what is happening. They, too, are waiting to get information to get their next orders. But right now, the order is to stay in place, shelter in place for those in the community. And it looks like the police continue their defensive stance as the shooter or shooters continue continues to fire. So really two different scenes playing out the active mm -hmm. scene there with a suspect or suspects that are holed up in a row house at this point and police that are still taking on fire at this point. The other situation and the other scene that we're following is what's happening at the hospital Temple University's trauma center very active there as we've seen family members rush in to the hospital to check on their loved ones at this point. Again according to the FOP and Philadelphia police. None of the injuries sustained, none of the gunshot injuries are life-threatening. Uh, nonetheless, these are their loved ones who have still been injured in some way. So we've seen lots of family presence there rushing into the hospital. We are awaiting a press conference at this point from Police Commissioner Richard Ross. We understand Mayor Jim Kenney is going to be there as well. We also understand that DA Larry Krasner uh, is at the hospital as well, as well as a large police presence, of course, they are supporting uh, the men and women in blue that have been injured. And our Greg, uh, Greg Argos is on scene near Ground Zero. Let's go in and check in with Greg right now. Greg. Yeah, Yuki, I can tell you in just the past few minutes, we've heard that the SWAT team, which is uh, about a block or so from where I'm standing here in the Tioga section of North Philadelphia, actually just appeared to be one more gunshot being fired. 
multiple shots now being fired here, what appear to be shots, third shot just fired. Uh, there have been what appear to be a few minutes ago, um, some type of negotiation, a fourth shot um, happening between whoever's inside this home and the SWAT team. Shots are continuing to be fired. I don't know if these are being shot by Philadelphia SWAT members or if they're being shot by the suspect, uh, but this has been a, a tense situation, to put it lightly, over the past uh, hour plus now as the SWAT team has engaged with uh, the person or people inside a uh, home here in the Tioga section of North Philadelphia. Uh, this after six officers, six officers have been shot here this afternoon starting at 435, which started as a warrant service call, we're told by Philadelphia police, ended with at least six officers shot, more gunshots being fired as we are going live right now. Uh, the SWAT team appears to be engaging uh, with the suspect. The goal, as you can imagine, as shots continue, get this person in cuffs and in custody. Uh, shots are are continuing here in North Philadelphia uh, in just a tense situation. We have multiple officers uh, in this section uh, taking uh, defensive positions. I hear yelling happening, perhaps between police and the suspect. I'm going to pause for one second here and see if we can hear any of the commands. Uh, we're not getting our specific location uh, because uh, this, of course, is ongoing. And the goal right now immediately is to get this person in custody um, and then process the scene, which must be an, a tremendously difficult one for officers to do, considering that six of their fellow officers have been injured, uh, we're told, though, with non-life-threatening injuries um, this afternoon, all beginning at 435. I hear yelling in the background. I don't know if you could hear that. And there have been multiple shots uh, that I've heard over the past two minutes or so. I'm unsure if police are putting anyone into custody. My vantage point here is such that uh, we're staying back, we're staying safe, but something is happening right now. The suspect uh, and the police are engaging with one another. Incredibly tense situation, guys. You know, uh, police keeping uh, this community back from the scene. Uh, this is North Philadelphia. It is very dense here. A lot of folks live here. This is right off of Broad Street uh, in North Philly. And here comes, look at this, a SWAT tactical vehicle arriving right now. Uh, I don't know if more officers are going to get out and engage with the suspect right now, um, but this is a second vehicle, a second tactical vehicle uh, arriving at the scene here. This is a North Philadelphia section, the Tioga section of Philadelphia. I see one tactical vehicle with guns drawn appear to be rifles um, pointed at a home here and that appears to be where the suspect is engaging with officers as we speak uh, i'm talking a, a chaotic but obviously a controlled somewhat controlled scene with police i mean this is what they do uh, this is what the swat team prepares for uh, unfortunately in today's day and age um, with uh, with the type of weaponry and type of guns that people have access to uh, police have to respond in kind and whoever's responsible for shooting six officers of course the SWAT team is going to get involved and over the course of this afternoon a very tense and scary situation happening quite frankly um, police have continued to engage the suspect uh, we don't know if anyone else is in the house with him um, we know it's a male suspect inside uh, police were trying to serve a warrant and I believe I keep hearing some type of, it sounds like gunfire, it's coming, sounds like a little bit further down. Officers are sort of moving their positions here, and you see some officers running across the street. Our photojournalist is going to keep a shot up, but we're not going to give you specific details as to exactly where this is in case uh, whoever is involved in all of this happens to be watching our broadcast. Uh, but uh, over the past uh, hour now, uh, continued gunfire, um, sporadic, but uh, continued between police, the Philadelphia SWAT team, and uh, the suspect or suspect inside a home here uh, in North Philadelphia. So uh, Yuki and Natasha 
I don't know uh, exactly what the picture is. Uh, oh, I'm being told that they're opening, you might be able to notice, they're opening a, a police van right now. I'm not sure if they have someone in custody, but officers right here uh, with shotguns, it appears to be. Uh, maybe loading someone into a police vehicle right now. We're trying to uh, get you visuals for that. So, hey, Greg, when you uh, when you heard those heard shots, shots in the past, Greg, when, when, you, when you heard those shots, do you know if they were coming from that SWAT team that we are looking at right now, or was it too difficult to tell because the one member of the SWAT team on the top of that vehicle has not moved his hands or his eyes away from his weapon pointed at that house. I was just curious if you could hear where those shots were coming from, if it was from that SWAT team. Exactly, Yuki. So that, that uh, SWAT member on top of that tactical vehicle obviously has a rifle pointed exactly um, where the threat is. Um, I cannot tell with my eyesight from this position. We are close, but we are not close enough to tell exactly who has been firing, whether it's been police, whether it's been the suspect or suspects, or whether it's been both. But we have heard gunshots, and now we can see some officers here um, are getting into their vehicles, putting on some gear, and uh, we're not sure if the situation is, is coming to a close. As a matter of safety, we're going to try to back these vehicles. Okay, so Thank you, sir. So Philadelphia police are, are moving back. Back the cars, yeah, this should be. Back the cars, you can move on this side. Can we just do this real quick? Yeah. The Philadelphia command staff here moving the vehicles back as a matter of safety, they're saying. Um, so we are going to, you know, of course, just uh, be careful here and and back up a little bit. So, Greg, we see that they're obviously moving. The, the, um, but, uh, so as we. Yeah, they're moving the perimeter there. We can see that they're moving the, the scene, moving you guys back, obviously, just to, to make sure that you stay out of the way of any gunfire. Have you heard, is there, you, you said you heard yelling at some point, as well as, as some other uh, rounds of gunfire uh, just a short time ago. Uh, is there, do you know, is there a, a police negotiator there on the scene who is talking to this suspect or suspects? Is there, is that what we believe is playing out at this point, or do you have any more insight on that? Well, Natasha, I can tell you that it appeared about 10 minutes ago uh, there was someone yelling commands. I could not specifically hear what the commands were, uh, but someone uh, yelling commands on a loudspeaker. I would assume that might have been a police negotiator uh, trying to uh, communicate with whoever was inside of this vehicle. But as you can see, officers now trying to remove uh, some of the vehicles here from this location. Commander, can you give us any type of update? Is it over? This is an active live situation. An active live? It's a matter of public safety. As a matter of fact, I would appreciate it if you got on the sidewalk. Sure thing, sir. So uh, I was just told by one of the commanding officers here, this is an active live situation, and they're asking us for our safety uh, to, of course, back up. We're going to comply with those requests. So there might be some camera movement here. Uh, in just a minute um, as the police move back the scene uh, slightly. So uh, this is where the community has gathered, of course. Uh, this is where the media has gathered. Um, but I'm told seconds ago, this is an active live situation, still ongoing. It does not appear that a suspect or suspect has been placed in custody. But you can see right here, if Matt, uh, you could just sort of, hey, we're going to go off the show. Uh, we're going to move the camera briefly here. Uh, so apologize for the movement. But you can see what's happening now. So officers are moving some of the vehicles and trying to keep um, us and the public in safety uh, in, a sa in safe situations. I have not heard gunfire uh, in the past uh, 10 minutes or so, uh, but you can see uh, multiple vehicles moving, mo being moved back here. Um, officers sort of dispersing or at least moving their locations. These were all the officers that you're seeing uh, who were sort of stationed by one of the homes near the scene, some plain clothes and many uh, in uniform as officers now are, are moving back their vehicles. Um, I'm, I'm told, like I just mentioned, this is an active live situation, but uh, from my interpretation of this, it might be coming to a close. The reason I say that is the officers who were in defensive positions are no longer 
in those positions. I see a white van. I see a white van, if Matt, you could show that with the back door open. I do not know if they will load the suspect. We have not heard any commands from SWAT members of the Philadelphia Police Department uh, in the past few minutes. We have not heard gunfire, which I can tell you is a relief. Um, and officers are moving their vehicles from this scene, which appears to be uh, appears to mean that it's safe to move these vehicles. If there was active fire, of course, officers were not um, would not be doing this. Uh, so this might be, at least through my interpretation right now, as this is a a fluid situation. Um, it might be coming to an end. My colleague Joe Holden has been uh, using his resources and his sources within the Philadelphia Police Department at the Criminal Justice Center to gather as much as he can from his perspective and with his sources. I want to bring Joe Holden uh, in live now uh, with what he's learned. Joe, right here it appears uh, it may be wrapping up. What have you heard? Well, Greg, let's keep uh, this fluid and please jump in when you have to, because I know you are where everything is uh, breaking right now. But according to a source in the department, um, the count now is seven Philadelphia and or injured six from sustaining gunshots. And the seventh one would be the officer involved in responding and somehow caught up in a car crash on the way to that scene. Emphasis is on the fact that all of these wounds have been described to me to be minor and non life threatening. Let's also talk about what is going on at your scene right now, according to my sources in the command center who are trying to get to the bottom of this and understand better how to resolve this situation. Right now, police are Joe, Joe, prepared to use whatever much, uh, type of either right here, vehicle and That's or SWAT or tactical here. sort of vehicle to try right now, and past, get uh, into that building, that residence, if they have to. Um, that doesn't mean they're going to. Um, another breaking detail we've confirmed through sources is that this person that police are trying to bring into custody has at times apparently live streamed part of what is going on on his end of all of this. You heard right. Philadelphia police confirming that the individual was at some point live streaming his end of this ordeal. We are really rapidly trying to figure out what social media service that was happening on. And my source in the department tells me up until two minutes ago, they were still working on trying to shut that down and make sure that they could put an end to that live stream broadcast. Um, Greg, but again, um, seven Philadelphia police officers either wounded or injured. We use the word wounded when someone sustains a gunshot wound and injured from other types of injuries. It is seven. There's a car crash involved in one of those and then the remaining six were apparently sustained during this gun battle that according to a high-ranking source continues even as I speak Greg Joe, Joe, thank you very much uh, for that information. And, and right here to paint the picture of, as to what's gone on near the actual shooting scene right now. In the past, uh, you saw live past five minutes or so, this entire street right here in the North uh, Philadelphia section, the Tioga section of Philly, uh, was lined with Temple Police and Philadelphia Police vehicles. They've since moved those vehicles back. Uh, there were officers lining uh, one of the buildings here in a tactical defense position. Those officers have dispersed, but what has not changed is that black SWAT tactical vehicle uh, with the armed Philadelphia SWAT member and his rifle pointed at the suspect's home or at least the home where this suspect is located. Uh, we do see that Philadelphia police van, its doors wide open. Uh, that is often how um, suspects are transported after they're placed in custody. We do not know if that suspect is placed in custody but as Joe Holden just mentioned and as you just heard, his sources are reporting that this person was live streaming this up until about three or four minutes ago. Uh, that's not an indication as to whether or not the broadcast stopped because he was placed in custody. It does not appear that anyone has come out of this area. We have not heard, which
which is the great news. We have not heard any volleys of gunfire uh, in the past uh, 10 plus minutes. And the officers that were in defensive positions, you can see some SWAT members right now with tactical rifles past the scene. Uh, they're not rushing to any location. They're not in defensive positions, uh, which is by all means after a very hectic afternoon, um, a, a good indication that things at least uh, are, are more controlled. I don't want to say that they are over. Uh, of course, there's a lot to process here, um, but the situation at least with SWAT members and the police in certain positions um, has started to shift. You can see members of the SWAT team right now uh, in the distance there. They're still uh, in their tactical vehicle. Uh, that white van in the forefront here, um, we have not seen anyone, uh, been, no one has been loaded into that vehicle just yet. We're hoping that this suspect is in custody and that things are going to wrap up. Um, but we, we, you know, uh, I do hear commands being yelled, and there is one SWAT member I can see in the right portion, perhaps, of your screen running towards the location. Uh, I cannot tell what those SWAT members are yelling. Um, so I, 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 you know, but that indication this is still going on. Um, you know, there are officers in multiple locations all throughout this area. Uh, I see one commanding officer to the right um, signaling to one of uh, his officers. I don't know uh, what is about to happen or whether they are still engaging with the suspect. Uh, the, the amount of police, at least physically that I could see, uh, has changed, at least on this block in the Tioga section of North Philadelphia. Hold on. Hey, hey Greg, I, I was writing some notes with, on what you and Joe and were reporting, so, and as I looked up on right, the screen... Guys, there is... There is, there is gunfire. All right, Still gunfire. So, got, all right, there's active gunfire, and and police are now telling people, if, he can see, if the suspect can see you, if you can see the house, he can see you. So now they're asking... Everyone, uh, to act. All right, all right. There's still gunfire happening. We we are in a location where we're blocked by vehicles, but the community here uh, is getting a little bit tense. You're gonna have to go to the end of the block. All right, we're getting we're afraid of a round. Some did in the early confrontation. Rounds were a couple came down this street. came down the street. Yes. The suspect's still inside, sir? Yeah, but I, I, that's it. Okay. Sure, all right. So one of the commi one of the commanding officers here, we're going to be safe. Uh, we're going to just move down the street here, so bear with me. Um, thank you. Uh, we're moving down the street, guys. Uh, one of the commanding officers here at Philadelphia Police told us earlier that a round did come down the street. It wasn't while we were here, thank goodness. Um, but... Obviously, we want to stay safe, uh, and so the members of the community are moving as well, those here in this neighborhood. And I do, you know, there's a lot of commotion happening right now, and some arguments with police. Um, but we are going to just move over to the side here, guys. Um, yeah, great. <laughs> And continue to monitor this. Let's walk on the side, sidewalk right here and just stay back. So, Greg, um, you were, the commanding Greg, officers are asking us to leave because there is still active gunfire. And Greg, okay, you said, you said, that. yeah, Greg, we want you to stay safe. We see that there's a lot of activity there behind you in the neighborhood as well. Uh, police again saying that one of the rounds did go down that street at some point. So right. they're saying if, if you can see this house where they believe the gunman is, then he can see he or she can see you. So obviously they want people to get out of the way there. No doubt about that. And a while ago, I would go ahead, Greg. Go ahead. Asha and Yuki, just to reiterate real quick, I did hear, I did hear from that commanding officer who told me about that round being fired down this street. He told me that the suspect is still inside engaging with police. So uh, the movement of the vehicles here might have been a lull in the action, uh, but quite certainly the suspect is inside. SWAT members have not yet been able to uh, place him under arrest, and and the media and the folks living on this block because of our safety, the police making that a priority as well. I mean, their focus, of course, is to get this guy in custody, but they do not want any other injuries. Uh, there's already been enough bloodshed right now here in North Philadelphia, and um, hopefully this will wrap up because of the dangerous situation and because of the angle where this home is. Um, they do not want anyone getting hit with a stray bullet. I do not know what type of weapon uh, the... So, 
All right. They just mentioned that the suspect has a rifle, and obviously, obviously rifles can fire long distances. I don't need to say that, but this side of the street is exposed um, to that possible. You got to go to the end of the block, please. You got to go to the end of the block. All right. We're we're, We're going to go to the end of the block here. Right. Go to the end of the block. As you heard, police officials are telling when everyone to clear out. Mm -hmm. Something could be possibly dramatically about to happen. Yeah, you never they, know. they're definitely pushing community members yes. out of the way, pushing yes, the media are. down the block a bit. We, we, they did say they believe the suspect has a rifle, which obviously we know is capable of firing many, many shots. We mm -hmm. don't know how much ammunition this person may have. Exactly. This has been playing out now for more than two hours, So, and there's been constant sure. gunfire since the very beginning. So we have no, no course, idea yeah, how hurt. much ammunition this suspect may have uh, or, or what he, he is engaged in at this point. But they are still engaging this suspect. It is not at all under control. It's still a very dangerous situation there in that nice town Tioga neighborhood. And you can see residents there just trying to figure out what's going on because they have obviously been watching this all play out from the very yeah, beginning. A lot of things are happening right now. While Greg was giving his report, I, I casually looked up after taking you some notes and I thought, I'll have to check back with Greg, but I thought I saw one of the SWAT members with uh, maybe a, a battering ram type of uh, apparatus. So I don't know if that's part of the game plan right now, why they are moving people back, are they about to initiate going into the home or not. Um, but obviously something is about to go down, something's about to happen uh, at, for the situation that once again, it's been about uh, what, 4.30 started, 6.32 hours and 15 minutes. This has been going on and as Greg reported, seven officers, uh, we have reports now, seven officers wounded and or injured and the suspect from Joe Holden said the suspect suspect was live streaming what was going on from his vantage point, his or her vantage point. Yeah, during the gun battle. During Apparently, the gun police battle. police believe he was live streaming the gun battle and the shootout as it was playing out. They were desperately trying to figure out how to stop that and shut that down. Uh, mm -hmm. In the midst of all of this, just you can just see how brazen this suspect is. The fact that he is still engaging police officers after six of them have been shot at this point. They are still taking fire at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. He's still engaged in a gun battle with police and they are are desperate, desperately trying to de-escalate this situation as quickly as possible. You saw the SWAT tactical vehicles there, one in place in the street, others arriving, uh, one SWAT member who has a rifle uh, trained on the row home that we're talking about, where we believe this mm -mm. suspect is holed up at this point. So uh, again, a very, very dangerous situation. Greg and our crew members and all the crew members out there, we've got lots of media out there as well. We just want everybody to stay safe. We don't know uh, where these bullets could end up. They don't have names, as police always exactly say. Exactly why one of the officials told our Greg Argos, this is, quote, an active, live situation. And it still is. It still is. There's no end in sight at the moment. Greg has moved a little bit further down, as have members of the community, away from the scene. Because as you said, Natasha, and as the authorities have said, if you're in the line of sight, the government can see you as well. And stray bullets have no eyes. They just go. They just just go and someone could get hurt. Yeah, seven officers have been hurt this far. Seven officers hurt. One of them, we believe, was responding to the scene and may have been injured in a, in a, a car accident of some type, but six officers definitely sustained uh, non-life-threatening gunshot wounds. Uh, the bulk of those officers have been taken to Temple University Hospital. Mm -hmm. That is pretty much uh, headquarters at this point for high-ranking police officials. Comm Commissioner Richard Ross uh, is, is still heading there to the scene. Uh, we understand Mayor Kinney will be there. Uh, DA Larry Krasner, other top police officials are there as well, and family members, of course, yeah. of these officers uh, have been rushing there to the hospital as well. So we're awaiting a press conference which will shed more light on exactly what happened there in that 3700 block of North 15th Street earlier today. Uh, narcotics uh, officers who were serving a warrant, a service uh, warrant of some kind. Um, and there's FOP. That's how this all started. President John McNesby right there still gathering information, still trying to figure out what is going on and waiting himself for the officials and family members there at the hospital. And our Greg Argos, I understand, has heeded the officer's request by moving back, way back. And Greg, how far back are you now? And uh, give us the latest from your situation. I see they're putting up the tape. 
Yeah, well, you can see the police tape is being placed right behind us. Uh, we did check with the commanding officer. He has confirmed we are safe, especially on this side, which is the west side of the street. Uh, and that's because uh, the uh, shooter, we're told by that same commanding officer, um, is armed with a, a rifle. And uh, rifle rounds can go very far, and they are very accurate. Uh, we were told earlier one of the suspects' bullets did go down the street. It was not while, I want to reiterate, it was not while we were here, thank God. Um, but they are moving the public. You can see on this side of the street is their concern because that is in the, the rifle's range. Uh, and so uh, members of the community, though, are um, refusing to leave their homes. They have the right to stay in their homes, of course. But we as members of the media are heeding this warning and we're staying uh, safe, of course. And we want to provide you the latest information. Uh, the commanding officer tells us we are in a safe spot right now, so we will continue to report what is going on. A very tense situation, one that is still active and still live, according to that commanding officer. A suspect barricaded, apparently, inside a home uh, about two blocks or so from where I'm standing. I'm not going to give my exact location because, as Joe Holden was reporting, uh, this person uses social media, perhaps is watching television, um, and was streaming this apparently live on some type of social media app uh, as this was all unfolding. Right now, uh, the terrible news is that six officers have been shot. Fortunately, we're told through multiple police sources, uh, these injuries are non-life-threatening. A seventh officer in the incredible police response to help out the others that were injured was injured him or herself in a car crash as that person, that officer, was responding to the scene here. We're in the Tioga section of North Philadelphia, and I can tell you uh, there are at least 50 or 60, 70 perhaps, uh, members from this neighborhood who are watching. Um, members of the of media, of course, are covering this. And, and our goal is to give you this information and to keep uh, keep ourselves safe. I'm with multiple photojournalists from our station, CBS3. And we want to give you that information, guys. We want to stay safe. Like, like I mentioned, this all began 4.35 this afternoon. We've heard multiple. I'm losing track now. I think we're up to five or six volleys of firefights, of, of gunshots, essentially, between police and the SWAT team. Um, since we are further back, you might not be able to tell, but there is a tactical SWAT unit. We saw a second tactical unit pass by a few minutes ago, but that tactical unit in the middle of this street uh, has uh, multiple officers, SWAT members on it uh, with rifles pointed at the suspect's location. The goal, especially in, in a city, uh, the city of Philadelphia, when there's open firefighting happening, is to get the person or people responsible in custody and to reduce any injuries. We already have seven officers, six shot, one injured in the response. Uh, I don't believe there are any civilians hurt, but police are keeping everyone back, trying to get members of the community and people living in these homes out of the line of fire. But if we pan to the right here, you can see a very large group of people uh, on that home right there. That is about where we were standing across, across the street from them, not the same side. That side of the street, guys, is uh, in the line of fire, according to the commanding officer of this suspect. And, uh, you know, you obviously don't want anyone to get hurt. Police have asked those folks to leave, but it is private property and they don't have to. We move back and we are in a safe spot now to report what is happening. I can tell you uh, perhaps one of the most tense situations I've ever covered in my 11 plus years of reporting. Uh, I can tell you also that uh, the goal now as the sun is starting to set, what time is it? It's nearly seven o'clock now. Uh, this started multiple hours ago, 4.30ish, 4.35 or so here in Tio the Tioga section of North Philly for a warrant service call. Someone had a warrant out for his arrest. Police went to that location. They had information where he was, and apparently he was armed. And this has been going on, a terrifying situation with gunfire in the streets of North Philly happening between the suspect, Philadelphia police, and the Philadelphia SWAT team. These are highly trained men and women as part of the SWAT team who train for this. But it is still such a dangerous situation because this person, we're told by that same commanding officer who moved us back for our own safety and the safety of those in this community, this man is armed with a rifle of some sort. 
I don't know the model, but rifles can fire accurately at long distances, and they don't want anyone getting hurt. That's for he sure. He is still, at least as of 10 minutes ago, not in police custody. And Yuki, go ahead. And Greg, I was saying yeah, we do not want people hurt. I wish those people would get out of the sight, the line of sight of the, the area you're talking about. But as you were giving your report, Greg, we had shots of the hospital. I don't know if we can go back to the hospital right now. So stand by, Greg. Don't go away. Uh, we're going to go back to the hospital on the left side of your screen there where we saw family members, friends coming to the trauma center at Temple University Hospital. We also saw City Council President Daryl Clark arrive as well. Uh, a lot of people on their phones, a lot of people still trying to gather information. We saw a few hugs uh, as far as uh, the injured are concerned. So many family members are going into the hospital right now to check on their loved ones in the Philadelphia Police Department. Yeah, a lot of activity there at Temple University Hospital. It is the closest hospital to this scene and where it all played out there in the 3700 block of North 15th Street in the Nicetown Tioga area. At least uh, three or four of the officers were rushed there to that hospital. Again, they all have non-life-threatening injuries, but many, many family members we have seen filtering and in, into that hospital. Many of them we saw running in just to check on their loved ones uh, and, and are continuing to do that even now as they're probably getting word about what has mm -hmm. happened here in North Philadelphia. So we are still awaiting a press conference that will certainly give us more information hey, hey, about the condition of those officers who have been shot and injured as well as uh, actually what transpired and what actually started this gunfire earlier today. Gunfire that started at 435 this evening. Once again, you're looking live at the trauma area of Temple University Hospital. Yes, People going in and out, checking on their friends and loved ones and members of their family in the Philadelphia Police Department. It is a brethren. Center of your screen, John McNesby, the president of the of Fraternal Order of Police, mm -hmm. and he looks to be going into the building right now as we all are awaiting a press conference from Mayor Kenny, from Police Commissioner Richard Ross as well. Uh, this is the situation you're looking live. It's been going on for quite a while now, quite a while. Been described as a major boil over earlier on. Sheer chaos, which seems to be I guess dying down just a little bit, but it is still an active, a very active situation. Yeah, we're still seeing SWAT team members who are uh, diffusing, trying to diffuse the situation there in the nice town Tioga neighborhood. This is about a block or so away from where this all initially happened. It's where Greg Argos is more closely located, and they've actually pushed him back even further mm -hmm. now uh, for his safety and the safety of others in that neighborhood because, again, they're saying this suspect does have a rifle of some kind. He has continued to engage police and gunfire throughout this evening and throughout the afternoon. Uh, no sign of stopping that just yet. Uh, we're still hearing reports of that according to Greg Argos and uh, the police are saying that at least one of those rounds came down the street uh, from near where all those folks are. That's why they're keeping them mm -hmm. at bay at this point. So still a very, very dangerous situation that's playing out there in that neighborhood. Let's check back in at the Criminal Justice Center. Our Joel Holden is standing by with any new information he may have gathered. Joe? I do have some new information. Just got in touch with two sources high ranking in the Philadelphia Police Department, including a deputy commissioner. Um, we reported about 30 minutes ago. It was believed that the number had climbed to seven. Um, that number has been revised. It is now still at six. There was some uh, confusion with if that number was including the officer who was actually injured off location and responding to the scene. So it is six, five hit by bullets and the other officer who was injured in the car crash responding to uh, the scene there. And uh, to recap uh, the information getting also coming from uh, these same sources, still no time frame yet on when uh, Commissioner of Philadelphia Police Richard Ross uh, will issue a statement and possibly take questions about all of this. It's my understanding that they are fingers crossed hoping that all of this concludes sooner than later, clearly, and that they can come and talk. I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us. We begin this hour in Philadelphia, where several police officers have been injured in what is still an active shooter situation. Witnesses report hearing hundreds of shots fired near Temple University's Health and Sciences building. Police are urging residents to avoid the area.
Jerika Duncan is there at the scene. Hi, Jerika. What do we know so far about how this shooting unfolded? Well, I can tell you we've been here for a little over an hour and we've heard multiple gunshots being fired. We've even been moved. You see where that first yellow caution tape is, that police tape? Then there's the second one. We were originally at that first, uh, that first police tape and now we've been moved back. The reason being police say that they're concerned uh, because this is an active situation. Uh, they don't want anybody to get hurt. In fact, they told most of the neighbors don't even stand right here directly, but my, make sure you try to stand off to the side because they don't want anyone to get injured. But as you mentioned at the top, six police officers shot that we're aware of. The injuries that we're hearing uh, these officers suffered is a gunshot to the head, one officer was shot in the hand, one in the leg. We're hearing that they're expected to be in stable condition, uh, but there's so much more that we have to learn this evening as it continues to develop. Well, Zerika, we don't know if you should be standing there. Uh, I, I, we're worried about your safety. I mean, do you still hear gunshots at this moment? Yeah. What? When we were a little bit closer, I could hear what sounded as though the SWAT team officers negotiating with somebody inside the house in question. Uh, it's our understanding that there's at least one person in that house that is continuing to fire those rounds. And we're also hearing reports that that person might actually be live streaming these events as it's happening. We haven't seen any evidence of that, uh, but that is something that is being reported at this hour. Um, we haven't heard any gunshots in the last five to ten minutes or so, but not that long ago we heard a pop, pop, pop. And when we were even closer, I remember at one point hearing at least ten uh, gunshots. There were neighbors who were here when all of this unfolded and say it sounded like hundreds of gunfire that was ringing out at the time. That happening at about 4.30 this afternoon. Is there Multiple suspects have been arrested and again six officers shot and they're their condition at this point that we know is that they're in stable condition, Tanya. So multiple suspects have been arrested, but as far as we know, the gunman or is there reason to believe there could be more than one uh, shooter who's still at large? We're hearing that there's just one shooter still at large inside one of these homes here in North Philadelphia. Uh, the SWAT team, again, it sounded as though they were negotiating at one point with someone, um, but it's a very active scene. There are a lot of neighbors, children out. It was actually happening near a daycare center. We heard from a mother who's concerned about why police, she feels like, should have moved in sooner or quicker um, because she's concerned about potentially children that might still be in that daycare. So scary, Jurika. Have you had a, the opportunity to talk to other yeah. people in the neighborhood? Mainly just the people who heard it, Tanya, mm -hmm. and are just as concerned as anybody would be when you hear uh, what they're describing as hundreds of rounds of gunfire that they said they heard. And then you see the amount of police presence here. Uh, if you're watching a lot of the people here watching the local news stations and they're seeing the, the, you know, the helicopters you can see or hear them up above. Uh, so just even getting that aerial perspective and seeing the large police presence is extremely concerning for residents here. And of course, there's no information yet on a possible possible motive. Is that right? Our understanding is that police were here to um, to serve a arrest warrant and there were multiple people inside the house. Again, we believe some of those people have been taken into custody and one person still inside that house firing gunshots at police. And you mentioned briefly at the beginning there uh, the reports that you've heard, and I think our affiliate is reporting it as well, that the suspect may have been live streaming some of this. Is there anything more you can tell us about that? Uh, you know, just to hear something like that is bizarre. We haven't seen it, so we don't have any evidence of it, but it is being reported at this hour. All right. Well, Jerika Duncan, thank you so much, and please stay safe. Thank you so much. And CBS News security analyst Paul Violas joins me now on the phone. Paul, thanks so much uh, for calling in. What is a typical response from police in these situations? And of course, this is still an active situation as far as we know. Right, Tanya, and that's critical for everybody to understand. This is very much of a fluid situation. What you're seeing is an interior and exterior perimeter being set by police. We know they, they understand where the threat is and where it's coming from. So they'll set the interior perimeter, and that is where you see the yellow tape. Police will operate inside that. 
No one will come inside that outside of police. They'll start to evacuate homes, which they already have, and you can see that. Now, they can't force evacuation, but they can ask people and, you know, really kind of beseech them to understand that it's in their best interest to evacuate all homes within the area that they feel is going to be high risk. They're going to try to establish eyes and ears inside that particular home so that they can understand as much as possible what's going on. They're going to open up lines of communication. So typically you're going to have a negotiator from the police department. Now, Philadelphia has one of the most experienced tactical units in the country. So you're going to see a negotiator that's going to open lines of communication with the individual inside and do their best to explain to them it's in their best interest to surrender. And that's what's probably going on right now as we speak. So, Paul, when you mentioned there's an interior sort of perimeter that police are most concerned with, when we look at the wide shot there and we see the police tape, you know, from a distance, there you go, that's the shot I was, I was looking for. That doesn't look like right. a very big area. So are you saying that the, the shooter or the suspect is suspected to be within that little swath? That's correct. Now, you're also, if you can see, you know, just past where Jerika is, you can see that there are vehicles set at the at the ends of each street. Mm -hmm. That's the outer perimeter, and that's where police and you have um, probably going to be the uniformed officers from Philadelphia Police Department that are going to be posted at that area to make sure that, and, and this is a great shot that, that CBSN has here, is that you can see that that outer perimeter that police have set to ensure that citizens, media, et cetera, cannot come anywhere relatively close so that they could be hurt. So that's that outer perimeter you're looking at right now. Great shot. Of course, you mentioned that they cannot force people to evacuate. So this is still a dangerous, a dangerous and fluid situation. No, it, it is very much so, Tanya. And, and, you know, having been down this road, you can only do your best. You can't force someone out of the house. Mm -hmm. So this is where those communication skills of police officers really come in handy of to explain that it's really in their best interest and, and to, to uh, help them evacuate as quickly as possible and as safely as possible and ensure them that as soon as the risk is mitigated that they will be escorted back to their home. That's the key part right here. Make sure that that area is clear of any kind of collateral damage so that police can take complete charge of that situation and open up those lines of communication so that hopefully they can mitigate this without any more shots and they can dissolve this, dissolve this threat. And what's so extraordinary is Drika was saying that she could hear some of those negotiations taking place. That's how close she is, which, which, which sounds rather terrifying, and I don't know how safe that is. But, but, Paul, in a situation like this, police know that this shooter has fired many rounds, multiple rounds. Witnesses report hearing hundreds of gunshots. So what does that tell you about the ammunition capacity of this suspect? Well, the, the, the biggest part about that, Tanya, is that, and I'm, and I'm not questioning the validity of what any of the witnesses have said, but having done this for just about 40 years now, I can tell you that when you hear gunfire, it's a traumatic event. Mm. And for a civilian to hear that, you know, what may sound like 100 may not have necessarily been 100. And you've got that huge adrenaline rush that's going through everyone in the neighborhood right now, and that's more than understandable. So... I don't want to say that you really have to take it with a grain of salt, but you have to understand that that people are in a traumatic situation. So you don't necessarily know for sure that that hundred rounds that came off was really a hundred rounds. Sure. You just know that you just know that what they said, though, Tanya, means mm. that they heard them in succession, which is telling police the type of weapon or weapons that the individual may in fact possess. That's right. the key part that they take from that. And, and there's no way to gauge then when, for instance, he may be out of ammunition, when it may be safe for them to storm the locale. You're absolutely correct. Now, part of that, though, Tony, goes back to the genesis of, of this investigation where, from what I understand, shortly after 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, narcotics officers were attempting to serve a warrant at that house, mm -hmm. which would tell us that narcotics officers had intelligence of the individual or individuals and the house, typically that means that they've already done surveillance on that house of those individuals. So it's not like they're going to go in there blind. Right. So they probably have a good amount of information right now, which will assist them 
and, and good positive lines of communication with the individual, with the, with the barricaded suspect, to hopefully mitigate this expeditiously. All right. Well, once again, this remains a fluid situation. Uh, thank you so much, Paul Violas, for, for filling us in on exactly what's going on on a tactical level right there on the ground uh, as we speak. Thank you so much, Paul. My pleasure, Tanya. For continued coverage of the shooting in Philadelphia, we're going to turn now to our CBS station there, KYW. that area and at some point we don't know we, we uh, believe that some parts of Temple University uh, is still in a lockdown mode uh, we had heard right. that earlier um, so we do believe that that is still likely the case because the situation is still not resolved yet so they're not going to release that lockdown until they know that they, they can uh, release folks to leave and be safe and fortunately Temple University Hospital is just minutes away minutes away from this situation they do amazing work there uh, Einstein is not too far away Way and that the injured, the wounded have been taken to both of those hospitals. We are waiting to hear from police, uh, police commissioner Richard Ross, who is getting the information he needs. He's on his way to the hospital. Mayor Kenny also is on his way if they are not there already. And we just have not heard from them. But our Kimberly Davis is on the scene and we will check in with her in a matter of moments. Yeah, and, and we are hearing uh, again, uh, this is a negotiation mm -hmm. that is, is taking place there in this neighborhood that we're looking at right now where these SWAT team members are, where there are, are, are several, uh, you know, uh, police officers, scores of police officers there in that neighborhood. This is an active request, not even a request at this point, just begging this gunman pretty much to try to, to uh, come out of the house to resolve this as peacefully as possible at this point so that no other action has to be taken. Uh, so right now we understand the gunman is still in the house. Police are still engaging him, trying to convince him to surrender peacefully so that they can resolve this situation in a peaceful way. Now, sadly enough, it does not appear uh, that he would even be threatened by this because he's continued to engage them in some kind of gun battle up until a short time ago. So there's still been gunfire from the very beginning of this scene at 430 when the, the uh, narcotics unit that went there to, uh, you know, issue this warrant. Uh, they took fire at that point. As we know now, six police officers uh, were shot or wounded. Six at five have been shot. One wounded responding to the scene, all non life threatening injuries, thankfully. Mm -hmm. But again, police are right now urging this suspect to please surrender to us, surrender to police, trying to resolve this as peacefully as possible. We see a little bit of activity now. Whenever you see officers run, you always immediately center your view uh, right on the screen. The pace has picked up. There's officers armed with rifles. They are stepping with a lot of pace now. I don't know which direction they are in, but let's go down to Greg Argos right now. He may have a better vantage point as to what is going on. Greg? Yuki and Natasha, we do have some new information about what's going on here in the Tioga section of North Philadelphia. It's such an active scene over the past few hours. We just witnessed uh, four females, uh, two women and what appear to be two younger women being escorted by the Philadelphia SWAT team as well as um, the Philadelphia police. Uh, they were coming from the direction where all of this action was taking place. Um, our photojournalist Ed Spey actually followed them and was able to talk with them. They said they were inside the house at the time on the second floor and that the Philadelphia police saved them. Uh, that just happened in just a few minutes. They were escorted away, like I mentioned, by uh, by uniformed SWAT members and the Philadelphia police. But right now here on the scene, where those four ladies just came from, still SWAT is located. Uh, there's a large uh, members, uh, many people in this community still gathered. And uh, all eyes are focused on this one home here in North Philadelphia. Apparently, all beginning around 4.35, as we've been reporting, for a warrant service called Joe Holden. My colleague said it perfectly. It is one of the most dangerous calls uh, members of law enforcement can go on because they simply do not know uh, what they could encounter. And in this situation today, Wednesday, they encountered gunfire. Six officers are confirmed uh, shot, but fortunately, those officers have non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, we're also told by the officials official Philadelphia Police Twitter account. There are multiple non-gunshot 
injuries to officers. They did not give a specific number. All of those injuries, the the uh, non-gunshot injuries, as well as the six officers shot, I want to reiterate, we're told are non-life threatening, but still, when you have six officers shot and a suspect in a dense metropolitan area, still barricaded, as sun is setting, it is a dangerous situation, to put it lightly, here in North Philadelphia. Members of the community have been told by commanding officers uh, to get out of the street. They are in the line of fire. They have the right to stay there. It is their property, or at least some of their property. Uh, they have not moved, but officers told us we are in a safe place right now, even though earlier, before we were on location here, at least one shot fired by that suspect who were told by commanding officers has some type of rifle came down this street. It did not hit anyone, but it just shows you the dangerousness, the, the dangerous situation that can unfold on a second, a fraction of a second's notice here. There are police negotiators here, uh, multiple SWAT members. In fact, if we pan to the left right here, these officers, as well as that SWAT member, I believe, were the ones who were escorting uh, the four females from the scene. Once again, two women, two younger, uh, appear to be maybe teens or children, uh, who told our photojournalists here on scene they were on the second floor of this home. I do not know if that's also where the suspect was, but they were on the second floor of the home uh, when the shot started ringing out and they were saved. This is a quote. They were saved by the Philadelphia police. Uh, so they were upset. They were crying as they passed our cameras, uh, but they're now in a safe location. I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine what was going through their minds over the past few hours because this has now extended almost into hour three. Uh, shots fired at 435. Dozens, if not hundreds of officers from all throughout the city, different jurisdictions, Temple Police, the uh, Philadelphia Sheriff's Office, descending is the best word I can use, descending upon this scene here, the Tioga section of North Philadelphia. I'm not giving the exact location because we don't know if the suspect is in custody and we don't know if he is watching. We're told he is armed with a rifle uh, and apparently multiple rounds over the past, uh, now almost three hours, I've heard at least five volleys of fire. We've heard negotiators with the Philadelphia Philadelphia SWAT team trying to communicate directly with this suspect. Our Joe Holden, through his multiple police sources, an upper command of the Philadelphia Police Department, reporting that this suspect was even live streaming the entire situation, this dangerous situation on some type of social media platform, which is incredible if you think about it. We've witnessed um, at least four women who were in the home at the time of this shooting being escorted out and now essentially got uh, it is a, a waiting game. Uh, we are waiting to see how this is all going to wrap up. The Philadelphia police, the SWAT member, uh, SWAT members are in front of that home, uh, just a few blocks north of where I'm standing here, uh, and they uh, have made contact with this suspect who's apparently live streaming this. Now they have to end it. The sun is setting. I don't know what will happen uh, or if officers will bring spotlights out in the next 45 minutes or so when the sun sets because because as you can see, this block here is shaded and they have to have eyes on this suspect. Uh, everyone, everyone in this community, everyone in the Philadelphia Police Department, everyone watching, I'm sure, wants to see this end. It's been hours now of gunfire in North Philadelphia and just a terrifying situation. Yuki and Natasha, hopefully this will wrap up soon, but if uh, this is any indication, we've been here now three hours, this person, is apparently uh, there's some kind of commotion happening. I think it's some interaction with police. I do not hear uh, any gunfire or whatnot, but uh, hopefully this will wrap up very soon as sun sets here in North Philadelphia, Yuki. Greg, when you were talking about the four women who were escorted from the scene and saved by the police, I'm, I'm thinking about the design of row homes in certain areas of the city. Some of them are connected with roofs over the porch, I'm assuming. I have no idea, and maybe you can tell by the design, if maybe uh, if maybe they went if maybe they went on the roof to get to that second floor to get them out maybe a front room window 
Yuki, I'm not exactly sure. From our vantage point, especially now that the commanding officers have pushed us back to a, a safe location, I can't specifically see uh, the home that is the target of the Philadelphia mm -hmm. SWAT team here in North Philly, but I can tell you that uh, it appears to be uh, like a traditional Philly row home with um, you know the, the front-facing windows and the front porch. Mm -hmm. um, the, the women uh, who were escorted by the SWAT members and the Philadelphia Police Department did tell our photojournalist uh, that they were on the second floor of this building. I do not know if that is also where the suspect is located or if he's on a, a third floor perhaps or even the first floor, uh, but they were visibly upset, crying, I'm as sure. they were escorted down this street right here. And... Um, and I'm sorry, uh, there was some type of commotion happening. I'm just going to step out of the way here just to let our photojournalist show you the scene live. Um, not sure what is happening just this second, but I can tell you those women, as you mentioned, Yuki, uh, I mean, imagine being in this home where uh, I've counted just on my own accord more than 25 shots fired, and I wasn't even here for the initial interaction of all of it. We were inching our way towards the scene because the police response was so massive. Whenever there are officers injured or shot, of course, anyone who's available is going to rush to the scene here uh, in law enforcement. That's exactly what happened at 435. Mm. Hey, Greg, do we have any other indications? Members of the Philadelphia Police Department now are engaging. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Greg. I'm sorry. Are you seeing something there? You said they're engaging the suspect? Uh, it just appears that some, no, they're engaging some members of the community who have gathered. Uh, these folks uh, that you see to the right have been asked to get off of that side of the street because they are in the line of fire. That is why we moved here to this safe location on the other side of the street, about 50 or 60 yards from them. Um, uh, but of course, they have the right to be there. It's their property. And so uh, they have not moved. Um, I don't know. I see some of the detectives and the command staff here uh, with the Philadelphia Police Department walking across the street here in North Philly. I do not know uh, if this is coming to a conclusion. Um, I have not heard gunfire, which is great, in the past um, past 30 minutes or so. So uh, we do see some officers running in the distance, but I cannot tell you exactly where, where they are running to. Uh, we do want to share also, I just mentioned you, he and Natasha, um, the four women, uh, the two adults and what appear to be two children or two younger women escorted from the house. They said they were in when all of this unfolded. Uh, here's what they had to say. Take a listen as to what they to told our photojournalist, Ed Spen. I, I think, I think God for these cops. they good people. Don't say nothing bad about them. They kept us safe the whole time. The whole time. They kept us safe. By the permission of a guy. Huh? I live on the second floor. And that's where all the got a little bit of room here, please. Thank you. Yes. I just want to go in. You're okay. All right. You're going to have a seat, okay? So quite a terrifying situation for the people who were physically in the home at the time this all unfolded. We are told that this uh, shooter is still inside the house, SWAT, uh, dealing with this barricade situation. I do not know if there are more people inside the home, but the great news tonight, as you just heard, <clears throat> Despite them being incredibly shaken up, uh, those four women are okay. They were escorted away from the scene, far from the scene, by the Philadelphia SWAT team and the Philadelphia police. But here, guys, uh, it's still an active scene. We're going to remain live, we're give you those live pictures and give you as much information as we can. But uh, as we again, just to recap very briefly, 4.35 this afternoon, this all started. One shooter confirmed with a rifle uh, has been firing at police. Six officers injured, fortunately not life-threatening. I want to just say that again. Those officers were told are not are suffering from non-life-threatening injuries, uh, but there are multiple non-gunshot injuries as well, according to the Philadelphia Police Department's official Twitter account. Uh, details could...
district attorney, the Philadelphia police commissioner, all at some point will make their presence outside the Temple University Hospital emergency room where the bulk of wounded officers uh, were transported after really chaos erupted there in the nice town Tioga section of North Philadelphia. Temple University and other uh, businesses, hospitals, quickly and rapidly, rapidly went into lockdown as hell broke loose in that neighborhood and a gun battle ensued between the police department and at least two suspects. They were there to serve a warrant and the narcotics unit was first on scene, according to a police captain. And then from that point forward, things went downhill and police began in this gun battle with, again, at least two suspects. The one suspect, our source is telling us, detained at the scene. It is unclear if he has been transported to Central Detectives and or the Roundhouse. But I understand, Greg Argos, there is more activity from where you are, my friend. What are you seeing? Yeah, Joe, just the past uh, 20 seconds as you were giving us that update uh, about the president being informed about this insane situation essentially here in North Philadelphia. We did hear one gunshot. It, it appeared uh, to be possibly a rifle uh, being shot. Now we know and we see the Philadelphia SWAT uh, team, uh, they are armed with rifles as we've confirmed that the suspect is armed uh, with one as well. So we're not sure if that shot was fired by police, if that shot was fired by the suspect. Uh, we have not seen uh, much uh, interaction or much um, commotion, so to speak, from police uh, as that shot rang out. So it might have been from the SWAT team. Uh, but once again, uh, Joe, Yuki, and Natasha, more gunshots being fired right now. And so Greg, I was going to say we, real if quick. Look, if, if you pan out wide, Matt, I want to show. Yeah, sorry to cut you I off, Greg. I was going to say, uh, while Joe, you're describing sorry, that. that uh, these folks on the right-hand side. Go ahead. Greg, I was saying that Philadelphia police have been confronted all summer with a serious uptick in gun violence. And not to link things, but my sources in the department have been at a fever pitch of frustration with what they've been confronted with this summer. And it goes all the way back to the last weekend in May, where they rolled out what was called Operation Pinpoint, which was essentially a saturation of areas of the city that they detected were susceptible to higher rates of gun violence and from my sources perspective it appears that police have also been similarly concerned about the high rate of gun arrests that have happened on the streets this summer they have not seen gun arrests this high in quite some time in fact my one source a staff inspector told me that they were nearing the entire gun arrest total from 2018 just now. So this is an extremely uh, uh, hot situation for Philadelphia police as those on the ground are again confronted with a serious set of circumstances, one that has become violent for the brothers and the sisters of the Philadelphia Police Department, where six are wounded in a shootout with at least two people who sources say were being sought for an active warrant related to some type of narcotic investigation. Greg. And Joe, and Joe, as you mentioned, I mean, for the viewers here who don't live in the city of Philadelphia but are watching us perhaps uh, from some of the surrounding uh, areas, uh, you know, we are in a dense city, of course. This is North Philadelphia, highly populated. And over the past now almost exactly three hours, there's been an active volley of gunfire, a gun battle, per se, between Philadelphia police and at least one suspect. Uh, we are not in a rural area. This this is right near Broad Street in North Philadelphia, the Tioga section of Philly, and there's active gunfire between the Philadelphia SWAT team and at least one suspect.
You, you heard Those from four women fire. who were inside of that home, they say, when this all unfolded, visibly shaken up. Imagine being inside. I don't know what their relationship, if any, is to the suspect, uh, but they were inside the house, as they as they mentioned, on the second floor uh, when this happened. This warrant, call for a, a warrant service. Essentially, someone has an arrest warrant or a warrant out for their arrest, perhaps a felony arrest warrant. Philadelphia police get intel. Uh, information as to where that person is, uh, and they tried to make that arrest uh, without any incident, and that is not what happened here today. What happened here today at 4.35 or so this afternoon is officers uh, with the narcotics unit attempted to serve this warrant, and six of them were shot. Thank goodness with non-life-threatening injuries, we're told, but now we're dragging into hour three in a very dense, very populated section of Philadelphia where there is active fire as the sun is setting. It could not get more dangerous than this. And if we pan a little bit wide and show Matt some of the folks who are gathered uh, from this neighborhood standing on an elevated position to the right at that home, we were told we were standing on the ground near them about an hour ago. We were told by one of the commanding officers who moved all of the media back those folks are in the line of fire and earlier today before we came on scene when this all unfolded at least one rifle round traveled down this street and thank goodness it didn't hit anyone but this situation could turn unfortunately at any second those folks have not heeded the warnings to to get out of the line of fire uh, because they're on the opposite side of the street from where this shooter is apparently barricaded uh, but we have taken those warnings we want to provide you the the most up-to-date accurate information but we want to do it safely uh, Philadelphia SWAT, their goal, their primary goal, I can tell you, especially as the sun is setting and it gets harder to see exactly what's going down here in the Tioga section of Philly, uh, they want to get this person in handcuffs and figure out what in the world went down, why it all happened, and why six of their brothers and perhaps sisters are now in emergency rooms dealing with gunshot wounds. As uh, Joe was mentioning, the, and as we've confirmed, these are non-life-threatening injuries, which if there is any silver lining in any of this chaos today, as one of the officers here is just backing up his car, uh, the good news is that these have uh, these officers have non-life threatening injuries. I want to go back now to my colleague Joe Holden at the Criminal Justice Center uh, with some new information. Joe, fill us in. Uh -huh. Yeah, Greg, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Sergeant Eric Grip with uh, the Office of uh, Public Affairs for the Philadelphia Police Department just put a tweet out two minutes ago. I quote, officers continue to attempt to communicate with suspect. Suspect is still firing at officers. Stay away from the area. It cannot be emphasized enough that this is still ongoing. There is hope that it could be resolved or that it is underway of being resolved. But the fact that this suspect is still firing at officers, according to the Philadelphia Police Department, is, and we are now three hours and five minutes into this standoff uh, between Philadelphia Police and this suspect. Uh, so at 4.30 this afternoon, things went downhill and rapidly downward spiraled in this section of North Philadelphia. As Greg's been mentioning, a highly and densely populated area with homes, businesses, schools, universities, hospitals. And we, uh, let's see, we're gonna go to the anchors right now. They have some information, uh, Yuki and Natasha. Okay, Joe, thank you so much. We're gonna stay with live pictures as you are looking right now. We'll get back to Joe and Greg in just a moment, but we are gonna stay with this live video. And as we do, as we watch this active scene, we have a recording. We want to play the very dramatic call for help that went out earlier today. And as we do, I want to let you know that it may be a little difficult to understand what is coming over the scanner, but I'm sure you'll be able to get the gist of it all. Let's, uh, let's play that right now. Car stand by, car stand by, 3700 North 15th Street, shots fired at police. Shots fired at police inside the property. Inside the property. Possibly, we'll enter officers, we got a possible barricade. Cars use caution, please, and respond. It's right there. Stand by, car stand by, 2nd and 2nd, shots fired, shots fired inside. Page 101, 80, shots still ringing off. Give me SWAT ASAP. 
Long gun, ASAP. Radio, I got an officer shot. I got an officer shot radio. All right, so I'm shot. Radio, listen. They the one one in. I got an officer shot at this location in the leg. 141, please send additional cars immediately. Send additional cars. Were un Still shot fire. I got officer shot at this location. It's like lower extremities of the president. Our standby is going to be a 36. We got several shots, officers. We got an officer down. I need, I need long gun SWAT. We have an officer shot, and they're, feel, they're still being shot at. The dramatic 911 call yeah. earlier this, this afternoon here in Philadelphia. It's difficult to listen to that, just to, to hear the officers, the frenzied moments uh, as this shooting was unfolding in the 3700 block of North 15th Street. You could hear the officers, shots fired, shots fired, mm. got an officer shot. Lower extremities is what one officer said. They're calling for a barricade. They're calling for SWAT ASAP in that area. And that's exactly what happened when a call like this goes out. As we know, Yuki, officers mm -hmm. from around the city of Philadelphia, no matter what district, what area you're in, they drop everything. They swarm to that scene. That's exactly what we saw and what we're seeing even now at this hour as hundreds of police officers are there in the nice town Tioga area right now. This situation is far from over. Far We're from still over. trying to communicate with this suspect at this point. He was still holed up in a row house, it appears there, in that area about a block, couple blocks or so away from where this all initially happened. Uh, police, again, imploring him to please surrender. Uh, and try to resolve this as peacefully as possible as nightfall is yes. about to transcend on the area. The sun is setting here in the east. It is 7.36 p.m. And that has not diminished the tension of the situation. If anything, the situation has heightened as we continue to wait. Once again, almost three hours have passed. No resolution thus far. The injured are at two area hospitals, once again with non-life-threatening injuries. As Greg Argos reported moments ago, four people were in the row home where the gunman is. They were rescued by police. We heard from them, obviously shaken, obviously frightened and disturbed, but they are okay. But as Greg just read the report, the tweet from the Philadelphia Police Department, that they are imploring the gunman to give himself up, give himself up at this time. As we watch in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, that's City Council President Daryl Clark on your left. I'm sure a press conference will be, I guess, take place in a matter of moments, we hope. But until then, the situation continues as you look at this live scene. Yeah, so we're looking at the live scene there with, again, police saying that this suspect, uh, despite the fact that they have been, been asking him now to surrender so that they can resolve this as peacefully as possible for hours, now, ultimately, that is not the case. They have continued to take gunfire, to take fire from this suspect. They are continuing to be fired upon, apparently, by this suspect, according to Philadelphia police. But they are also continuing to try to negotiate with him and trying to talk him down and get him out of that house and resolve this situation as peacefully as possible. And I wonder how seriously the gunman, gun person, is taking this because, as we mentioned earlier, he was live streaming the situation mm -hmm. not long ago. Go. Not long ago. So this is a situation now. Six Philadelphia police officers shot and or wounded. The suspect is still firing shots and they are asking the community. You see some of them right there to stay as far away as possible. You can see the crime scene tape right in front of them. They cannot go any further than that. Yeah, and let's get back to Greg Argos, who's right there at that scene. He's got some information for us. Greg. Natasha, good evening. We are now past three hours from when that call you just heard went out across all channels here for the Philadelphia Police Department and responding, uh, responding departments. Everyone rushing here to this scene as dispatchers say, said, I need long guns SWAT to this location. And that is what is here right now. The Philadelphia SWAT team with their long guns, with their rifles, still trained on this house where this suspect is barricaded. Now, about 30 minutes ago, four women were being escorted by Philadelphia SWAT, as well as members of the Philadelphia Police Department. It appeared to be two adult women and two younger women. Uh, our photojournalist, Ed Spay, was able to catch up with those women as they were being escorted from the scene. They said they were inside the house at the time and take a listen as to what their reaction was. I, I think I think for these cops, they're good people. 
Don't say nothing bad about them. They kept us safe the whole time. The whole time. They kept us safe. By the permission of a guy. Huh? I live on the second floor. And that's where all the people are. Thank you. Yes. Come on, sir. You're okay. You want to have a seat, okay? Anybody want to go on the other side? Why don't you get in? They kept us safe the whole time. That is what those women were saying who they say were inside the home at the time of this entire terrifying situation. Yuki and Natasha, just imagine yourselves in that situation as members of the Philadelphia Police Department entered, we're told, around 435 for uh, that call for a warrant service, an arrest for a warrant. They were encountered by gunfire. Six officers confirmed shot with non-life-threatening injuries. And we're told by the Philadelphia Police, multiple others with non gunshot injuries also being treated, those also non life threatening, fortunately. And ever since around 4 35, there's been continuous back and forth bursts of gunfire every 20 30 minutes or so between the Philadelphia SWAT department and the suspect inside this home. You just heard where those four women were inside as well. Uh, we're told by one of the commanding officers here on scene that suspect does have some type of rifle, those can fire long distances very accurately and uh, that's why they're keeping us far from this scene a very active scene as the sun starts setting now going into three plus hours of a barricade situation here in North Philadelphia still an active one the SWAT team out front with their tactical units and their long guns as was called for during police dispatch some three hours ago hopefully this will all resolve hopefully the SWAT team will be able to enter this facility and hopefully they'll be able to put this person, this male, we're told, in handcuffs and transport him to the police department for questioning. We are in, as I've been reporting all afternoon, as you've seen with this community, the neighbors here, a very dense section of Philadelphia. This is not a rural area by any means if you're watching this from outside of the city limits and it's populated. There are businesses, stores, homes. You just heard from those women who were inside the very home, they say, where the suspects started firing with police. And right now, uh, we still have the SWAT team here trying to end this situation before nightfall. I cannot tell you how important that is, of course, uh, because uh, Lecture, let me pan to the left here. You can see a SWAT vehicle now, a second uh, SWAT vehicle perhaps taking a position. Uh, the, the home, I'm not going to say our exact location, is about a block from where that SWAT vehicle, uh, the second tactical unit, uh, is being uh, placed in the intersection right here. Um, and I don't know if that's an indication that they're going to make entry. I don't know if you can see now the SWAT vehicle is going in the direction of that home. There are multiple SWAT members, of course, uh, at least at least a dozen with the Philadelphia Police Department, and I would estimate more than 100 um, plainclothes and uniformed officers here on scene as well, uh, basically trying to end this, guys. I cannot tell you how important it is, Yuki and Natasha, to get this guy in cuffs and get get their hands the police get the police to remove this weapon that he's been firing all afternoon well greg nightfall is certainly going to add a much more dangerous element to this as we all know that's why we understand that the the sense of urgency ultimately to resolve this as peacefully as possible uh philadelphia police yuki again putting out a tweet just a short time ago saying that they they're still trying to communicate with this uh this suspect and here's the tweet that they had put out just a short time ago this is uh Officer Eric Grip here, who I've talked to on several occasions, and we've dealt with him several times. Officers continue to attempt to communicate with suspect. Suspect is still firing at officers. Stay away from the area. So still such a sense of urgency, uh, such a dangerous situation that is still playing out there in North Philadelphia. I'm very concerned about the people that are up against that yellow tape there. They are still very close. They are not far from the SWAT vehicle right now at all. And Greg, if you're still with us, as the sun begins to set, I I was wondering if you have seen any indication of, of light fixtures being put up. And if that's the case, I would think they would be in this for the long haul. But do you see anything like that at all? You, Yuki, 
Yeah, Yuki, uh, if you can see in the distance there, uh, it does appear that that SWAT vehicle that just turned left onto this street here in North Philly does have some type of spotlight, and they're putting it on uh, the home at this moment. Now, we just have some breaking details that we need to pass along. This is very important. CBS News, their investigative unit has confirmed that there are two officers still inside the home on the second floor of this house while the shooter is on the first floor as we speak. So this situation is going to continue on until those officers are back basically saved by their fellow brothers and sisters. Once again, CBS News, the investigative department at CBS News confirming two Philadelphia police officers are still inside on the second floor of this home while that suspect is on the first. Night is setting here in the Tioga section of North Philadelphia. Spotlights are coming up, and this could now drag on for quite some time now that we have this news confirmed by CBS. This is going to go on because officers will not leave those two fellow brothers or sisters inside until they are out and the suspect is removed. So still night falling here in North Philly, and this is going to go on until those officers are out of that house. Just more and more disturbing elements mm -hmm. being unfolded here this evening, Greg. I mean, now we're learning that two officers are still inside that home. Uh, you know, the suspects on the first floor, they're on the second floor, according to the CBS News investigative unit. Uh, so you can see why they're taking this situation even more seriously and trying to make sure they can talk this suspect out of that house and talk him into surrendering peacefully. We seem to be having some uh, video issues with Greg right now. We will get back to him in just a moment. But as he just oh, reported, check, officers three, still uh, in the house. The uh, there's Board Officer John McNesby the of the battery. Federal Order of Police, the FOP, and the, I'm not sure. I thought that was a podium. No, that is not a podium. Uh, I thought they're going to be setting up for a press conference soon, but evidently they are not ready to do that as this situation continues, continues to be fluid. It continues to unfold. It, and, yeah. Joe Holden obviously has been uh, tracking information with his sources as mm -hmm. well. As we know, we're going to get back to him now and see what he has uncovered. That's uh, District Attorney, District Larry, Attorney, Attorney Krasner. Larry Krasner there. Uh, and we've, we are still waiting on Commissioner Richard Ross and Mayor Kinney, who are expected to brief the media and give us an update as well on the officers' conditions that have been taken there to Temple University Hospital. But for now, let's get back to Joe Holden, who has been talking to his sources. Uh, he's got some information for us as well. Joe. Hey, Natasha and Yuki, yeah, just trying to keep uh, posted on some timelines for our viewers, understanding when things may happen and when things may occur outside Temple University ER. Um, our news partner, KYW News Radio 1060, Pat Loeb, reports on Twitter that the Philadelphia mayor has been to Temple and Einstein to see the injured police officers and on, is on his way back to Temple. Uh, City Council President Daryl Clark is there as well. Um, apparently, no statements, Pat Loeb reporting until the scene is clear and our Shantae Lance also reporting on Twitter the Temple University saying the lockdown at the Health Sciences Center campus has been lifted so that is some limited good news that uh, at least some parts of uh, those areas of North Philadelphia may be resuming some normal business um, I understand that um, we lost Greg but um, listening to some of what Greg was passing along and about the concern as the hours grow longer and the police these resources have been out there um, okay. in an alert position that is a, probably the highest alert you will see and the posture the defensive posture and the CBS News information reporting that there are two officers also um, in that barricaded dwelling uh, trying to get this suspect out of there so much going on there but the rapidly falling darkness is of particular concern because it's just it's attacks on police resources also, the information about the social live streaming. It is unclear if police were able to get a handle on that and bring that to a conclusion. But the dynamic that this defendant, this suspect, was live, live streaming some of his activities at, while doing, allegedly doing gun battle with the Philadelphia Police Department is very alarming to investigators. Um, 
You can only imagine what the war room looks like tonight as police are trying to map out maybe on the hood of a car or perhaps in some bunker how they are going to try and bring this to as peaceful and as clean a resolution as possible, knowing that there are six shot Philadelphia police officers in hospitals across a swath of North Philadelphia tonight. And to add to that count, other officers who sustained a variety of what are described to be minor injuries. Over the course of the last few hours, as Greg Argos was giving his reports, we've, we've heard active gunfire uh, being exchanged between police and the shooter. The Twitter account for the Philadelphia Police Department and Sergeant Eric Griff reporting on Twitter that just as recently as 25 minutes ago that this was still a gun battle, an exchange of gunfire with police with what a weapon at the scene, a commander Greg described, uh, that the shooter was armed with a rifle. So all of that taken into consideration and what police are dealing with right now, we can understand why there will be no statements until there is some resolution to the situation unfolding there in that section of the city. And to take another look again, because it's, it's, it seems to be where Philadelphia police are directing the information, at least at Twitter, is that, uh, let's see, the latest tweet just came out a minute ago from Sergeant Eric Grip. It appears to deal with um, Parents and guardians of children from Shake, Rattle, and Roll Learning Center on North Broad and Precious Babies Daycare on Erie. Your children can be picked up from 3643 Germantown Avenue on the bus out front. So passing that along, I hope our web team is listening as well that Eric Grip is saying apparently children caught in the middle of all of this with the lockdown. There's information coming out from the Philadelphia Police Department right now about how you can be reunited with your children. And just take a breath and think about that for a minute, that parents were unable to see their children while all of this played out. There is so much to unpack with what is going on tonight in North Philadelphia. And we've reported about a half hour ago, the president has been briefed on the events in our city tonight. And we are keeping an active eye on his Twitter account to see if there are any updates. The Criminal Justice Center is where the justices and the judges sit for uh, two distinct courts in our city and county. It's the Court of Common Pleas, and it is Municipal Court, which in the other counties of Pennsylvania is known as Magisterial District Court. All of the documents, the warrants, all of the actions and activities that are lawfully executed in the city of Philadelphia are signed by judges and or justices out of this building. It has been relatively very quiet here tonight. Of course, things are done electronically, but it's been quiet from this position where I've been for the longest time. And we just set up shop here because it was the easiest way to electronically get in touch with sources in the police department. And of course, the number of law enforcement agencies across the city. Um, presence from him tonight, um, but he has made it known that he is a good partner in crime, a partner fighting crime with the Philadelphia Police Department in making sure that uh, they have a good working relationship. Uh, so we're trying to pass along as much information uh, realistically as possible, uh, but the number stands at six Philadelphia police officers wounded, their injuries described to be non-life threatening, and a handful of other officers who sustained injuries while uh, doing their jobs out there tonight. Um, that's the latest from here right now. I'll send it back to you, Yuki and Natasha. Joe, we did see U.S. Attorney McSwain uh, earlier at Temple University Hospital. We did see him out there with other police officers, so we do know that uh, his presence is certainly there. Uh, we saw the FOP president, of course, who's there, and other high-ranking Philadelphia police officers and family members as well who have all gathered there to check on their loved ones who were injured. And because of our extended coverage, a programming note, Big Brother will be seen on the CW okay, Philly. The CW more. Philly at 8 o'clock. We are going to stay with this as far as it takes us. Once again, a programming note. Big Brother right, will be so, seen uh, at 8 o'clock on the CBS CW Sources Philly. Let's uh, bring you up to date, officers. if we can, if you are just joining us. Uh, coming up on 8 o'clock here on the East Coast in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You're watching live coverage 
Here on CBS 3, of a tense and very, very active situation. Gunfire in North Philadelphia following a warrant service by the Philadelphia Narcotics Department. Gunfire ensued around 4.35 Eastern Time. And as we have been mentioning, a massive police presence responded. Six Philadelphia officers are wounded. We are told all non-life-threatening injuries. The gunman is holed up somewhere down that street you are looking at right now in North Philadelphia in a row home. And SWAT teams, Philly police, the authorities continue to implore the person with the gun to give himself up. All right, we also know that Alexandria Hoff is near the scene as well, and she has some very important information to pass along for parents at this point. So let's, we know that lots mm -hmm. of businesses are in that area, the daycare center that's been affected. So let's check in with Alex now to see uh, the very latest of what's happening out there. Well, Yuki and Natasha, we've been told that that daycare has dozens of children inside of it. It was in operation all day today, just feet away from the strategic location where the suspect was firing from. But we have learned those children have been now taken out of that daycare, and they are in a safe place right now, no longer at that scene. And I want to explain a little bit about where we are right now. We are in a position where we have a view of the tactical units, where they are stationed because they have access to this home from an alternate side. Don't want to describe exactly where they are, but it's a place that is serving as somewhat of an echo chamber. About 15 minutes ago, we did hear a series of loud bangs that seemed to be gunshots. So as Joe mentioned, this is still an active scene, and residents are not only advised, they are ordered to stay back. On the other side of the police tape, on the other side of me, I would say there's about 100 people. They've been steadily out there with their eyes glued east to Broad Street. And when we walked up, I will say there was a strange silence to all of it. Really, the only thing that you could hear were the child Choppers hovering overhead at this time. It's just a police chopper. Moments ago, we actually saw a drone as well. It's unclear who that belonged to. Hopefully, it was the police because it wouldn't be good to broadcast anything from a location that would compromise any of the officers out here right now. I was speaking to one young woman who told me that her aunt is actually barricaded inside of her house. And we talked to another woman who said that she had just come back to this area three weeks ago and she is devastated. How does it make you feel about your neighborhood and what's going on here today? I mean, what are you feeling like? Well, it's, it's unsafe, but it's, this is the hood. This is what we live with every day. I think something that's been tough for a lot of residents out here, because that's what we've been doing. We've been on the ground talking to people who have been out here all day. As you can see, there's a pretty good crowd over here. They've been watching everything unfold. And I think what has been somewhat frightening is that earlier on when we were out here hours ago, every time you heard those pops, people would jump, they would back up, they would look around. And now, after three hours, it has almost become a situation where people are immune to this. It's, it's been a tough situation out here for residents. We talked to one veteran who said that this was reminiscent of a war zone. So it's going to be a tough thing for a lot of people to comprehend and something that many people out here want to wrap up sooner rather than later. Again, with darkness approaching, that is something that has to be done. We are reporting live. We'll send it back inside to you guys for now. Okay, Alex, thank you so much for that. We will get back to you. Thank you so much. Let's check in now with uh, Greg Argos. Greg, I understand you have some new information. Yeah, CBS News uh, sources have confirmed that there are two strike force Philadelphia police officers in bicycle uniforms inside that house. One officer has one prisoner. The second has two prisoners on the second floor of that home. And the condition of both of those strike force officers is not yet known at this time. That is why there is still this very active scene. The Philadelphia SWAT team out front. Once again, CBS sources confirming two bicycle uniformed strike force Philadelphia police officers are inside that home. There are three total prisoners. One officer has one. The second has two prisoners in that home. The condition of those two officers is not known at this time. Sun is setting here in North Philadelphia and this is where the action will take place throughout the evening as Philadelphia SWAT and the dozens if not hundreds of officers here need to enter that building, get their officers and those prisoners out, and still there is potentially that one shooter as well inside that house who needs to be neutralized in some way. This is going to go on for some time now that we have confirmed through CBS News sources that there are at least 
two strike force officers and three prisoners that those officers have apprehended in this home at their time at this time. But once again, Natasha and Yuki, those officers conditions are not right known now, at this moment. OK, Greg. So again, uh, two bicycle strike force officers apprehended three total prisoners that are still inside the home and the, they're on the second floor we understand right and then the suspect is on the first floor is that correct 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 and so I don't know the layout specifically of this house if it's a multiple unit home where there's one apartment per se on the first floor and the second floor is a separate unit or if this home is connected if it's just a single family house uh, regardless of either of the situations we do believe or we have confirmed that there are two officers on the second floor with three prisoners and one suspect on the first floor that potentially is the suspect with the long rifle that the officer the commanding officer confirmed we're going to talk to Richard Ross right now uh, Philadelphia Police Commissioner take a listen all right I came over here to brief you uh, but we were at that scene because at around 4 30 today uh, officers were serving a narcotics warrant in a house uh, in the 3600 block of North 15th Street. They had already entered the premises uh, and got towards the rear in the kitchen area uh, when gunfire erupted and the shooter fired multiple rounds. Officers returned fire, many of whom who had to escape through windows and doors to get uh, from a barrage of bullets. Um, right now, we can tell you that there are six police officers who were struck by gunfire. Thankfully, uh, all of them are in stable condition. They were struck uh, throughout their body. Uh, one officer sustained a gunshot wound, a uh, graze wound to his head, thankfully. That was all that was. Got an officer shot in the arms, got officers shot in various parts of their body, but fortunately, everybody's going to be okay. We have three here. We have three at Einstein. Uh, we have a couple officers that were actually injured responding to the scene. I will tell you, Having been at that scene for the last couple of hours, uh, trying to talk to this male, um, he continues to fire rounds out of the window. Uh, so this situation is in no way resolved. I wanted to come and give you some kind of update to see, let you know where we are, but we are trying to talk to this male, um, trying to let him know that he can end this peacefully now. We've called him multiple times. He has picked up the phone a couple times, but he has not answered. So we've been trying to work with a family member, um, but right now we have not been successful. Uh, despite several attempts to talk to him, both on a loudspeaker, uh, on a bullhorn, and on telephone, uh, we have been not been able to make contact with him thus far. Uh, we're trying to get him to come out peacefully, uh, but right now he refuses to do so. I have to get back over to the scene. Uh, I will answer a few brief questions, and then the mayor might have some comment, and, and others might have comment, but right now I have to get back over because the critical thing to, to tell you that I did not tell you is I have you know some situations where I'm worried about potential hostage situations so we've got to get that resolved. All right, Commissioner, can you tell us the, 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 how the two officers who are inside, are they doing? Are they in, in, any insight into their well-being? Um, we believe they're okay, um, and I'm not going to say much more about that right now um, out of concern for their safety right now. Um, so we, we believe uh, that this male um, is in a certain part of the building. I won't tell you where they are, where he is right now, so that I don't endanger uh, the officers uh, on the scene in any way but it's a very volatile situation that is still unfolding. So as a result, um, there's but so much I can tell you about what's going on inside of that property, save for the fact that even when I was on scene, he fired multiple rounds, um, many of which that struck the SWAT truck and uh, buildings across the street. And that's long after, I got there long after it, it started. So he was continued to fire. It is a, a grave concern to us, but we're trying to communicate to him that we want him out safely, uh, even going as far as telling him that the officers are going to be okay and that there's nothing that we can't work through. But right now, um, we are not successful. So I'm going to get back over there. I'll answer just a few questions, and then i got to get back over there. Have you spoken to any of the officers' families? Uh, just you're talking about the injury. Yeah, that's what I just went in there. So I, I didn't get a chance because of proximity to make it to Einstein. I'll get up there a little later. Um, thankfully, everybody's going to be okay. I did speak to all three that are here, um, and you know they're all in good spirits. Uh, but you know we're we're concerned about this whole situation. Commissioner, do you think there's just one shooter? Uh, right now, we're not sure, and so I don't want to uh, say that and be wrong. Uh, nor from a tactical standpoint, do we want to make that assumption.
Was there anyone in custody at this time? There were people who were taken into custody initially, okay? Um, and there may be even someone in custody inside. But right now, what we know is uh, this male is holed up inside, and uh, he is not. Since I've come here in the last 20 minutes or so, there's no indication that he's trying to surrender right, right now. We do know he's still alive. There's no question about that because of the shots that keep ringing out. Uh, so we're very concerned about, you know, the neighborhood. We're very concerned about our police officers. But again, we're doing everything within our power to get him to come out. All right? Commissioner, you said you've been in touch with his family. What are they saying about this? Well, I mean, we're, what we're just trying to do right now is do as much as we can to resolve this peacefully. And so without getting into all of that at this point, we're trying to use and leverage everything possible. Uh, multiple attempts to talk to him by myself and others trying to assure him that I'm out front, you know, that we, he has the, the highest assurance he's not going to be harmed when he comes out. But uh, normally I wouldn't even take this posture, but I got police officers in a very volatile situation. And, you know, I've got to be where my people are. That's the bottom line. So I have to get back over there, Mayor. I don't Thank know you. if you want to see something. Well, I had the opportunity to just speak to the six officers. They're all in good spirits, and obviously it was a very traumatic experience for them. Um, I was talking to one of the officers who had the graze wound to the head, and he had two little boys that looked like they were nine or ten years old, eight or nine years old, and kept on thinking about how their lives would have changed just with a little bit more difference in, in space. Um, and um, I just our, our concern right now is for them and for their families, uh, and we'll sort out all the other stuff once this scene has been resolved over at the over over. The shooting, uh, where the sh shooting took place, uh, and uh, we're just we're thankful. I'm a little angry uh, about having someone having all that weaponry and, and all that all that firepower, but we'll get to that another day. Uh, it's all about the officers and their families right now, and uh, God bless them and God God save them all. Thank you. You've been listening to a live news conference at the hospital with Philadelphia Commissioner Richard Ross. Mayor Jim Kenney, Mayor Kenney there saying he's spoken to the officers, especially the one with who received a graze wound to the head, saying his two sons were there and how dramatically their lives would have changed if something different had happened. But they are all okay. And as the commissioner was saying, there is no indication that the person in the row home is about to give up. Yeah, he said specifically, situation in no way is resolved. He said, I've got to get back to my people. He's heading back to that scene. This is still a a very, very dangerous and volatile situation for the police officers there at that scene and also for this community as night falls. He said that this uh, suspect is still firing at police. They fired at police while the commissioner was out there hitting a SWAT truck and other buildings in that area. So this is definitely not a situation that's under control at this point. Again, uh, just to recap, uh, officers were serving a narcotics warrant at about 4.30 this afternoon. They had already entered the unit from what the commissioner is saying some of the officers had to run from gunfire after the suspect began firing at them and they were able to get out of the house. Six officers struck by gunfire, all in stable condition, struck in various parts of their body, according to the commissioner. Three are at Temple, three at Einstein. Uh, apparently, the suspect continues to fire at officers, and that is why this is a, of such grave concern to police and the commissioner. You heard the, the emotion in his voice mm -hmm. that he has got to get back to that scene. He's got to get back to his people and back to this community community because they want to get this situation resolved as quickly and as peacefully as possible. And he said they're talking to a single male. He did not say if there was, didn't want to say if there was another shooter. He didn't want to say that at all, but they have called this single male multiple times and he has not answered recently. Let's check in now. Let's go back out in the field and uh, check in uh, Joe Holden. I believe we're going to Joe now. Okay, Joe. Yeah, Yuki and Natasha. Yeah, and we listening to Commissioner Ross there. I mean, you've, we've worked with him for years. You know that he is a, a he wants his hands in the operations and the nuances of these investigations. And to hear that he is personally negotiating with the man on the other end of that phone is the commissioner that uh, I've come to know. And I'm not surprised at all at the information he's revealed and the timeline. Uh, so candid he has presented that at 4.30 this afternoon, it was 
uh, a call after that warrant service. And then from there, those officers entered and were in the rear of that structure in the kitchen area where the suspect police say just started shooting. Police exchanged gunfire and while trying to escape, as you've mentioned, through windows and doors to get the safety, six were hit in the process. The biggest emphasis, though, and I've pushed this out, and I think it bears repeating numerous times, is that the commissioner says everyone is going to be okay. Um, we can only cross our fingers and pray that that will be the resounding statement from here on out for the rest of the night. So dusk is upon us right now. It is 8:10. 808 make that, and we are just about three hours and 30. 38 minutes into uh, this chaos and uh, police are now concerned about a line of storms that is tracking in from the uh, the west and uh, I understand Chief Meteorologist Kate Bilo is going to be joining us right now to uh, give us some timeline Kate on when police might be dealing with yet now another piece of this jigsaw puzzle. Thanks so much, Joe. Yeah, it does look like a line of storms is going to be moving in here within the next half hour or so. Now, we don't have severe weather, but there have been reports of lightning and heavy rain, which, of course, just could put a damper on things or could start to delay the process that police are going through in this active situation right now. Let's take a look at some active radar on Storm Scan 3. Just want to update you on the latest that we're seeing out there with this line of storms that's moving in. They're still far to the west, so nothing imminent moving into the city of Philadelphia, but you can see a line has been gradually pushing south and eastward here across portions of Bucks and Montgomery counties. As we zoom in, you can see some pretty heavy rain, and we've just had a few lightning reports back into Chester County around Euclid Township, one up near Schwenksville. Again, this is still pretty far away. I've put a locator on the map here so you can see the area that we're dealing with. Again, in North Philadelphia there around uh, the Tioga section of the city, that's where that gleaming red box is. You can see storms are still well north of there and well to the west, but that's something that police are definitely going to be keeping an eye on, and we'll keep you posted if those storms Storms move a little bit closer to your area or to this active scene, of course, in the city. We're going to send it back to Yuki and Natasha at the news desk. Okay, Kate, thank you very much. Sunset, I believe, was just after 7 o'clock, and these are the conditions that the police are working on right now. That's the scene from Chopper 3. Sunset was around 7.15, and now, almost under the cover of darkness, the Philadelphia Police Department is trying to apprehend this suspect in North Philadelphia. This looks a little bit lighter because I believe we have Irish stuff, obviously, to make it look. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see what is going on and you can see the public with their phones out in this day and age of social media this is what happens and the police are keeping them back as far as they can from the situation there in North Philadelphia. Yeah the police are still saying this is a very dangerous situation this suspect is in no way looking like he is trying to surrender anytime soon still firing at police even up to what 25 minutes or mm -hmm. so ago mm -hmm. uh, this is still a very active scene a very volatile scene there that's playing out the police commission Commissioner, again, even stressing that he's worried about potential hostage situation even because there, the suspect, again, is in this house as well as two of the bicycle strike force officers, we understand, according to CBS News, and they have three total three prisoners, prisoners mm -hmm. that they've apprehended as well. So there are at least six people inside this home at this point and at some point, various points of the house, first floor, second floor, uh, not exactly sure where, exactly where everyone is, but there are still a number of people in that house including this suspect. So they're trying to get in touch with him via the phone, via bullhorns there on the scene. Uh, still in no way is there any indication that he is trying to surrender to police peacefully. Four people were rescued from this home and they were obviously frightened, very shook up, very, very concerned and very scared. But they are safe. They are safe and this standoff continues. Under the cover of darkness, we saw a SWAT vehicle with a spotlight on it pointing probably at that house. We cannot see it from here because it is probably two or three blocks down this street. You are looking at live. But they are on the situation and they are on it and they once again will try to solve this peacefully. And it's going to take as long as it takes. The commissioner had to leave the press conference because he had to get back to his people. Yeah. It's
It's as simple yeah. as that. He that's had to get back to his people to make sure no one else or no one gets hurt. Yeah, and that's exactly what he said. He said, I've got to wrap this up. I've got to get back with my people. I've got to be with my people. So he was there at Temple University Hospital. Three of the officers were taken there. Three others are at Einstein Hospital. All are stable, thankfully. We know that family members have rushed to these hospitals to be with them. We have seen them uh, scurrying into the hospitals throughout the afternoon and into the evening. So we know that they are being monitored, monitored at this point by doctors and their family also holding vigil there for them as well and making sure that they're okay. But again, the commissioner is stressing that this situation is in no way resolved nearly, what, four hours after mm -hmm. it all transpired yeah. and after it all started at 4.38 or so this afternoon. We're coming up on 8.15 in the East and we have to give you a programming reminder that Big Brother will be seen and is being seen on the CW Philly, our sister station, as we speak. As we continue our live coverage, six Philadelphia police officers shot, all doing okay. Once again, CBS News confirming two officers still inside the home. We're waiting more for more information about what's going on in that home and we have no idea how long this is going to take and we don't expect to have any idea until it happens and it will happen live right in front of you. Yeah, And this is another concern you were talking about just the growing crowd there mm -hmm. at the scene despite the fact that police are urging people to please stay away from this area. Please do not come in this area and impede this investigation, impede this negotiation that's now underway with this suspect inside. So the, the, you know you're still seeing the crowd of people who are are gathering just to try to take this all in or, or observe what's happening there in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. And it's still a very dangerous situation for them as well. And if you're in that neighborhood and maybe watching us and you're in that neighborhood and in that particular block where all this is going on, you see houses on the right, row homes on the right, row homes on the left, stay away from the windows. Just stay away from the windows and just sit until there is an all clear sign. But that does not seem to be happening anytime soon. Let's get back down to that scene right now and check in with our Greg Argos with any late information. Greg. Yuki, Natasha, good evening. As the commissioner just mentioned a few minutes ago, there is one man holed up inside this home with no indication he is trying to surrender. Officers have made contact, the commissioner says, with this shooter. He's picked up the phone multiple times but has not spoken with those negotiators here. We're in the North uh, Philly section here in Tioga section of North Philadelphia, I should say, where two officers, according to CBS News are still in that home. Fortunately, the six that were shot, according to the commissioner, uh, they have non-life threatening injuries. Three of those officers were rushed this afternoon around 435 to Temple University Hospital. Three others rushed to Einstein. A total of six with gunshot wounds. But once again, the important piece of information tonight is that none of those six have life threatening uh, injuries at this moment. Now, we want to back track a little bit to exactly when this all happened. The commissioner telling us this was a call for a warrant arrest. Officers entering this home here in North Philadelphia. They entered the home, went to the rear of the house, which is where the kitchen is located, and that is where they in encountered that suspect who opened fire. The commissioner saying officers trying to leave the line of fire any way they could. Some running out of the door they came from. Others jumping through windows. But when all was said and done, six officers were shot. Once again, CBS News sources confirming that there are two officers and possibly some prisoners inside as well as the suspect inside the house at this time. That is why this is still a very active scene as the sun has set here in North Philadelphia. And without that sunlight, of course, the Philadelphia SWAT team can bring out their spotlights. But even with those, it makes this investigation and this scene that more, much more difficult to contain. I want to step out of the way here and just show you uh, what we have here uh, at this scene. We're not giving our exact location, of course, but a very large group of folks from this neighborhood have gathered, um, basically going past police tape, inching forward. This is still an active scene. The commissioner basically saying, once again, this man is holed up inside and there is no indication he is trying to surrender. But you still have at least 100 people from this neighborhood inching closer and closer to where the Philadelphia SWAT team is located. 
and that is just simply, quite frankly, it's a dangerous thing to do. Uh, but that is what's happening right now. Uh, if there is any silver lining in any of this, I want to reiterate those six officers who were injured in the line of duty today, they have non-life threatening injuries. The commissioner saying one of those officers suffered a gunshot wound grazed to the head. Just how fortunate it was that it was simply a graze to the head, but still all six being rushed to trauma centers here in North Philadelphia. Those folks all expected to make a full recovery, which is great news tonight. As police, the Philadelphia SWAT team and countless officers here, of course, are continuing to engage, trying to communicate with this suspect. The commissioner says, once again, has no indication, no desire to surrender. Yuki and Natasha. Okay, Greg, thank you so much. Another tweet just went out from the Philadelphia police, and they say, as you have mentioned, officers continue to implore the suspect to surrender. They also say this can end without any further violence. Continue to avoid the area. Continue to avoid the area. And I, I do believe a little earlier we played the 911 call. I'm going to ask my uh, producers in the, in the control room, do we want to play that right now? Is that okay? Okay, we're going, to, we're going to do this. We're going to stay with this live picture as you are listening to this dramatic call for help. It may be a little tough, a little tough to understand, but I'm sure you will understand what you will hear. Let's do it. Car stand by, car stand by. 3700 North 50th Street, shots fired at police. Shots fired at police inside the property. Inside the property. Possibly injured officers we got a possible barricade. Cars use caution, please, and respond. Right there. <laughs> stand by. Car stand by. Second and seven. Shots fired. Shots fired inside. Crazy one and one eighty. Shots still ringing off. Give me SWAT ASAP. Long gun ASAP. Radio. I got an officer shot. I got an officer shot radio. Alright, so I'm just fine. Radio, listen. Take the one and one in. I got an officer shot at this location in the leg. 121, please send additional cars immediately. Send additional cars were un. Still shot fire. I got officer shot at this location. It's like lower extremities going further to it. Our standby is going to be a 36. We got several shots, officers. We got an officer down. I need I need long gun SWAT. We have an officer shot, and they're bil they're still being shot at. Well, this is extremely difficult to hear you, Very as you so. can imagine. Very that's the 911 so. call that came in right after officers responded to the scene in the 3700 block of 15th Street there in Nice Town, Tioga. You could hear the officers, just the pain in their voice. Officers shot, shots fired, shots fired. They were taking fire even at that moment when they were calling. You could hear the gunshots if you listened in the background there of that 911 call. They were calling for a barricade. They were calling for SWAT immediately. Uh, saying that officers were shot in the lower extremities, uh, really just giving us a very vivid, vivid look inside that yeah. situation and how volatile it was at that moment. We heard there was an arm wound. We heard one officer had a grazed wound to the head, a grazed wound to the head, but he is doing okay in the hospital. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney spoke with him and spoke with his family. He spoke with all the families of the injured officers tonight during this situation. And it is, once again, no end, no end in sight. We saw in our live picture there on the left in the smaller box that you were looking at, uh, some of the officers talking to community members. Everyone is being peaceful and being orderly and they have come up to the uh, yellow crime scene tape and I'm sure they have a lot of questions. Yeah. They have a lot of questions this just like we do. Yeah, yeah, this is this their is neighborhood. Their neighborhood. This is and you can see the police now still talking to them and trying to give them whatever information they have. They can't obviously reveal everything, but they are concerned and the police are keeping the public back now at a safe dis distance. Yeah, it's for their safety as well as the officers there who are on the scene, both inside that house still with this suspect and the ones who are outside as well trying to control the situation. SWAT team members and tactical units there have been there with their, their guns trained on that house the entire time for the last several hours or so. We also understand we've been getting tweets in uh, from officials, uh, whether it's police, giving us an update. This is from former Vice President Joe Biden. Here is his tweet, which says, uh, Dr. Biden and I send our prayers to the police officers injured today in Philadelphia.
Philadelphia and to their families who wake up every day knowing that their loved ones are walking into harm's way when they put on the badge. We're grateful for the selfless work they do to keep us safe. We also know that the White House and the President mm -hmm. uh, are, are monitoring the situation here in Philadelphia as well as Governor Tom Wolf, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. He tweeted as well that all the resources uh, that he can possibly provide if necessary are there for the Philadelphia Police Department and he's monitoring the situation as well. We are under the cover of darkness going on four hours now, just about four hours of this standoff, of this shooting, and you can see the only lights are maybe from a street light, from the street lights on the corner, the red light, uh, a lamppost, the officers' lights on top of their vehicles, and the SWAT team does have a spotlight, we understand, on the house that they are centering on, where this male victim, single male victim, is holed up. Uh, the commission would sit, go far, as far as saying that there was another shooter, but they are talking to this, they were talking to this single male victim, uh, single male she shooter, rather, in the house, and he has not returned their latest calls, so the situation Lost continues, the, the standoff goes on. Yeah, they're still uh, trying to get in touch on, with even his family at this point, yeah, anyone at this point who could possibly get in his ear and be of hang any on influence mm -hmm. to get him to surrender peacefully, that yeah, is what they're going to do. That's why the negotiation is is she being handled this right way now. and so I carefully. You, and you see that they have not rushed in to try to breach the doors or, or do Don't anything move. to compromise anyone's safety. Two police officers are still inside that house at this point, and right. that yes, is certainly not unnoticed by police. That's why they're handling this very, very carefully, very sensitively for the sake of those folks in the house as well as the community outside. Speaking of the community, I'm sure the department has a group of people, men or women, who may That's be fine. even interviewing some of the people in the community uh, about who this person might be, if he is indeed a member of yeah. the community, because we don't know that. What, what we don't know that for me? sure. This could have been just a, a random entry into a house. We don't know if it was his house or not, but we do know that the situation continues and it doesn't look like it's going to be over anytime soon. Yeah, we know that Police Commissioner Richard My Ross had been you. at Temple University Hospital where three of the officers were taken. We heard from him a short time ago at that brief press conference. He kept it brief. He gave us the bullet points of this story and mm -hmm. of the investigation at this point and then he said, I've got to be with my people. And he left that, that scene at Temple University Hospital. He returned likely. He is somewhere on this scene. There's no doubt about it because he is not going to leave this scene with a situation like this that is still very volatile and still playing out right now. We, so don't, we don't know how much ammunition this person has. And even the commissioner said before he got there, there was a lot of gunfire. He wasn't there at the very moment like his people were, as the other officers were. So he missed a lot of the gunfire and a lot of the action, but he heard about it. It went on for quite a while while our reporters were there. Greg Argos, he heard gunfire from time to time. We saw people running and scrambling back and forth, officers as well, taking cover, getting in their stance, their crouching stance, their defensive stance, but it continues. Things seem to have be quieted down just a little bit now. Maybe it's because of the cover of darkness. Maybe it's because of the negotiations that might be going on. We're waiting to find out. We're waiting to find out as the situation continues. We're coming up on 830 here on the East Coast in Philadelphia, PA. And it, this all started, came over the scanner at around 430, 435. So four hours into this active shooter situation, ultimately, mm -hmm. because officers, as you heard the commissioner say earlier, they entered that unit and immediately pretty much came under gunfire and they had to get out of the way. So many of them were able to scurry away and get away from the gunfire. Sadly enough, six of them were not able to. Six of them were struck by the gunfire and we're told all of them are in stable condition right now, but they were struck in various parts of their body. So again, you see that the community there gathering, it's hard to tell people to stay away from a situation because you know there's a lot of, you know, they're inquisitive, they want to know what's happening. It's their neighborhood. And, you know, they want to know, are we safe? What's going on? Let's find out what's going on and what's happening over at the hospital right now and check in with our Kimberly Davis. Kim? Yuki and Natasha, good evening. We just got updated by Police Commissioner Richard Ross not too long ago, and he is telling us three of the six police officers who were shot are being treated here at Temple University Hospital. They are in stable condition at this hour, and the good news is they are expected to survive. But it was a very quick press conference because Commissioner Ross did have to get back to that very active scene. We're told that they are still in talks with that suspect and he has no intentions on surrendering anytime soon. He described to us what it was like when those officers came under fire. Let's get straight to that video. 
I can, yes. They had already entered the premises can, yes. uh, and got towards the rear in the kitchen area uh, when gunfire erupted and the shooter fired multiple rounds. Officers returned fire, many of whom who had to escape through windows and doors to get uh, from a barrage of bullets. Um, right now, we can tell you that there are six police officers who were struck by gunfire. Thankfully, uh, all of them are in stable condition. Now, he described some of those gunshot wounds, we're told. One officer was struck in the arm, another was struck in the head, and another officer sustained a graze wound to his head or her head. But the good news is, again, they are all expected to survive. Commissioner Ross also says that he is concerned of a potential hostage situation. He also tells us he cannot confirm whether it is just one shooter. There could be multiple shooters, but again, this is all very if fluid, all this information is coming in and we will update you with new information as soon as it becomes available. Mayor Jim Kenney was also here for that press conference and District Attorney Larry Krasner again once new information becomes available we will update you. For now we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Okay Kim thank you so much. Here's some new information as well. Media for the media and citizens from the Philadelphia Police Department looking at their latest tweet and they simply say do not operate drones in the area of police operations. They obviously don't want anything to interfere with their operations and what they're trying to do tonight there in North Philadelphia. So that's very, very important. Yeah, and it's very important, again, that they keep telling people to keep their distance, ultimately. Do not come into this area. You know, stay away from this area. It's still a very volatile scene there. And, and this gunfire has erupted spontaneously and mm -hmm. sporadically throughout the evening. We, you never know when it's going to erupt again. So that's why they're so concerned uh, about neighbors in that area, about their own officers in that area who are trying to defuse this situation. Uh, this is very much a situation that is far, far from over right now. Even our Greg Argo said that a stray bullet like whistled down the block that he was on. He was not there at the time. He got word of that. So anything could happen in a situation like this. Once again, if you are in the area, in that, in the row homes on either side of that SWAT vehicle you see right there in the middle of your screen, just sit tight. Yeah, Sit tight. Yeah. And again, we're just hearing now that Alex Hoff, who's out there uh, at the scene as well, said she just heard gunfire just now. She did. As we were just talking. So, as we were so talking. As we were talking. Again, as we were saying, you mm -hmm. know, the, he's, he's firing sporadically here, uh, and, and there is no way that you can ever, you know, know when he's going to start firing again. That's why they keep telling people to stay away from this situation and away from that area because these bullets have already, rounds have struck a SWAT truck, we understand, according to the commissioner, other buildings in that area, and there are houses. This is a densely populated area of North Philadelphia. Houses, businesses, uh, daycare centers, as we saw earlier sure. today. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's just so much there that, that you could just be in the line of fire at any point. So you really have to be cognizant of that. And when it comes to the unknown, they have no idea how much ammunition or how many ammunition or how many weapons that this person has, this male in this home. And once again, two officers are in the home. We're not sure exactly where, but they are safe. They are okay, according to Greg in our last report. So the situation continues, and we are monitoring every single minute of it for you here live on CBS3. We have been. Everyone, I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us. Police are in a standoff with a suspect in a neighborhood of Philadelphia where earlier several police officers were injured in a shooting. Witnesses reported hearing hundreds of shots fired near Temple University's Health and Sciences campus early this evening. Police say officials are talking to the suspect. Jerika Duncan is there at the scene and joins us now. Hi, Jerika. What is the latest in the standoff situation? Well, we were here when we heard some of those shots being fired. The police commissioner says that he's worried that about a potential hostage situation. Those were his words at a news conference given outside of the hospital where six police officers uh, are recovering. They are in stable condition, according to the police officer, and they were involved in that shootout that ha happened earlier this afternoon. Now, we are about two blocks away from where all of this took place and have been moved back since we first arrived on scene because of the concerns for the community, because of the dangerous uh, nature of this situation. At least one gunman is inside, according to 
the police commissioner. And sources tell CBS News that at least two officers are inside, uh, which then makes sense when you think about the commissioner's words being concerned about, quote, a potential hostage situation. We're hearing that of those two officers inside, one officer has one prisoner and the other has two. Earlier, police arrived at the home to serve a narcotics warrant. That is when the gunfire erupted. We, again, have been here for several hours now and have heard multiple rounds of gunfire. Neighbors who live in this area said that it sounded like at times hundreds of gunfire erupting from that area. So it is an active scene. Uh, police are keeping us back and asking neighbors to stay inside and stay away. But just to recap, those six officers that were shot are expected to be okay. They are in stable condition. Uh, but the police commissioner says they're still negotiating with the gunman who is inside that home. Great news about those police officers in the hospital recovering, but certainly worrisome about those two police officers apparently inside the building. What more can you can you tell us about that? Do we know how long they have been inside? Well, this all started at about 4.35 Eastern. It's about 8.30, 8.35 Eastern right now. So you're talking about four hours when all of this started. And it sounds like it's been a process. You know, the police commissioner said that he's given uh, this person inside multiple opportunities to come out. They've been trying to talk to him through the bullhorn. They've been trying to negotiate. They've called him multiple times, uh, but have not been able to get him to surrender. So the concern concern, of, of course, based on our sources, is the two officers that are currently inside that home. All right. Jerika Duncan there on the ground in Philadelphia. Thank you so much. For continued coverage of the shooting in Philadelphia, we turn now to our CBS station there, KYW. Uh, let's call in Greg Argos. He's down there as well. He can give us some more information about that scene. Greg? Very tense scene here in the Tioga section of North Philadelphia, Yuki. We heard as Alexandria Hoff heard what appeared to be possible gunshots or possibly firecrackers. I'm not exactly sure. It sounded a little bit different than what we heard, those volleys back and forth uh, from just a little while ago. As we've been reiterating, as we just heard from the commissioner, those six officers, non-life-threatening injuries, that is the great news. But this suspect, we're told, still inside the house with a confirmed rifle of some sort and engaging with police still not surrendering himself uh, to investigators. Now, earlier we witnessed four women who were being escorted by the Philadelphia SWAT team down this block. Uh, they were visibly shaken, crying. In fact, they told us that they were inside the house when this all unfolded around 435 this afternoon. Take a listen as to what they say happened. I, I, think, I think God for these cops. They good people. Don't say nothing bad about them. They kept us safe the whole time. The whole time. They kept us safe. By the permission of a guy. Huh? I live on the second floor. And that's where all the... got a little bit of room here, please. Thank you. Yes. I just want to come in. And besides, of course, the very dangerous situation happening behind us with police and this suspect, there is also severe weather entering this region right now. We've seen multiple lightning shots. So we actually have to toss it back for our safety with all of this electronic equipment and turn it off for at least uh, the next few minutes as this storm passes through. That is the latest live here in North Philadelphia. Yuki, Natasha, back to you. Okay, Greg, thank you so much. Yeah, weather is moving in. Kate just gave us a little update uh, a little while ago. I don't know how that will temper the situation, but hopefully, hopefully something can be done and done soon because yeah. this is this is not good. Yeah, this is dragging into, like I said, four hours later now mm -hmm, since the office mm -hmm. initially started taking uh, gunfire from this suspect there in the nice town Tioga area, and they are still taking fire even now, as we heard Alexandria Hoff say that she heard gunfire just a short time ago as well. Police are imploring this suspect again, please surrender peacefully, surrender safely. Uh, we can talk to you. We'll talk you out of this. So whatever we need to do, they're trying to get in touch with his family mm -hmm. at this point. Whatever they can do to try to end this situation as quickly and as peacefully as possible. As I mentioned, maybe they're talking to somebody in the community who's a friend. You never know. What can they say? What can they do? What can information can they give them about this person uh, to hopefully add to 
him surrendering and hopefully and doing it soon. So I, it, it's tough to figure out right now. We are going off the information that our reporters and that the police and the commissioner and the mayor have given us. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough since we are not there as well. And they're going to give out limited information when it comes to this situation. Absolutely. And Joe Holden, again, has been following the situation for us. He has been talking to his sources with the police department mm -hmm. and uh, with other officials as well. Let's get back out to him and see what he has to say now. Joe. Yeah, Natasha and Yuki, I just spoke to some sources about where they are right now. We clearly know that the exchange of gunfire with police continues uh, with that hold up defendant suspect inside that house. Now, here's how it began. Here's a little more information and some context. The narcotic strike force was serving that warrant at a location down the street from where the barricade is happening right now. Apparently, seven people were taken into custody from that location. They are now at police headquarters. It is not believed any of those seven is connected to uh, the shooting that then unfolded. But here's where it gets interesting. The Narcotic Strike Force received intelligence that just a few doors away, there were suspects with high-powered weapons. They went down there, and that is where the story picks up, where the police commissioner indicated they were in the kitchen area where the suspects started firing on police and police exchanged gunfire and then police were escaping through doors and windows. Right now at this count, according to our sources, 30 Philadelphia police officers have discharged their firearms. They've been put in a bus apparently and there's a whole process involved with dealing with those officers because they have discharged their weapons. I'm told the lead on the case right now is a joint lead, the officer involved shooting team and homicide. Um, there have been no reported deaths at any of these scenes, but uh, per, per protocol homicide unit and the officer involved shooting team is um, jointly involved in the investigation. Uh, recapping, seven people taken into custody, not connected to the exchange, the gun battle with police, but they were at a, uh, let's call it location A, and then location B is where the gun exchange happened with Philadelphia police. 30 officers so far have discharged their weapons in this exchange, and the uh, People are who are being taken into custody are being uh, being taken to Philadelphia Police Headquarters. Uh, that is the latest from our sources here outside the Criminal Justice Center. I'm Joe Holden, CBS3 Eyewitness News. Yuki and Natasha. Joe, right. thank you. 30 officers. Yeah, wow. 30 officers have discharged their weapons. So this is two different <sighs> situations than mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. one that would happen with the, the warrant that was being served. And now this situation, which police had already had gone to a different location, apparently the one we're looking at right now, right. because they heard about suspects with lots of ammunition and a major and gun stockpile, power major power cash. Yeah. yeah. So this is two different situations now we're understanding that, that it played out. Un, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Unbelievable. 30 officers discharging their weapons. Joe's going to stay on top of that with all the, uh, the sources and contacts that he has as hopefully this comes to a resolution very soon. We see officers and people on the scene here at this location as well and as well as the one in North Philadelphia. Um, this is just not even close to being over. We're well over four hours now. Four hours since the call came in to our newsroom and the tension is just as gripping as it was when we first went on the air. Yeah, it really is. It just, uh, it, more and more layers of this story mm -hmm. just keeps unfolding here throughout the evening. Of course, that's what happens when you're in a fluid situation like this. But again, six Philadelphia police officers ultimately shot all of the injuries, non-life-threatening. Three are at Temple Hospital, three are at Einstein Hospital. They are flanked by Philadelphia police officers. They are flanked by their family at this point. And right now, the police commissioner and anyone, any high-ranking police official is out here at this scene near uh, in the Nicetown Tioga area trying to defuse the situation with this suspect who was holed up inside a row home, uh, trying to talk him down and talk him out of that house, hoping he'll surrender peacefully so that there is no more gunfire uh, that erupts tonight. I've just received notice that uh, storms are starting to roll in. As Kate mentioned a little while ago, storms are starting to roll in and to keep our crew safe and everyone safe, uh, we're gonna have to go off the air just for a few moments. We're gonna stay on top of this for you off the air. There you see the storms moving in uh, right now and how this will affect the investigation and situation. We'll stay on top of, of it. Our crews will be remain on the scene, but they will not be reporting because of the dangers that is
This is America's latest superhero. Don't forget to show love. This is his kindergarten class. This one-time school administrator is now architect. This is just some of her army. I want other people to know what they can do to their neighborhoods. This is doable. This history is still living. This is a miracle! So this is working. Oh, it's working. She has brought us the world. It is a new day here in this country. And told America's most important stories. How does a government shutdown affect national security? You put your family on a 737 max. She's opened our eyes. And what happened to you? I was sexually assaulted my freshman year. And our hearts. Were you scared? Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? About my mom. And weathered the storm. And they drove you through the floodwaters here. Now, every evening, she brings truth and understanding right when we need it most. Wow, this is pretty spectacular. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. Trust matters. This is the scene in Tijuana today. Earlier, hundreds in the... You used to live in the U.S. Yes. By all intents and purposes, you were in America. Yeah. Rafa has a young son. He wants to see him grow up in the U.S. like he did. We were alerted to yet another shooting here. I got shot with a 38. You afraid of Jacob getting shot? Yeah. As a parent, I'll do whatever it takes to get my son to the next step. This is confidential information. This is the latest. This is really a conversation. This is the real deal. This is a new form of warfare. This is not a real solution. This is a turning point. This is the most important election of our lifetime. This is a fait accompli. This is highly relevant. This is what a lot of people don't understand. This is a bill that protects victims. This is utter madness. This is what the American people want. This is this. This is Face the Nation. To give people the power to build community, to bring the world closer together. Make people doubt what the facts are and your trust is eroded. Social media was weaponized. The government has done a pretty good job of sowing some seeds of doubt into the minds of people. If nothing changes, we will lose democracy. Mm -hmm. This move towards authoritarian style leaders. I can see the same thing happening in the United States. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us. We are monitoring a developing situation. Police are in a standoff with a suspect in a neighborhood of Philadelphia where earlier several police officers were injured in a shooting. Witnesses reported hearing hundreds of shots fired near Temple University's Health and Sciences campus early this evening. Officials say two police officers are inside the house with the shooter and other possible hostages. Officers say their attempts to communicate with the suspect have been unsuccessful. Law enforcement says there is no indication the man wants to surrender. They believe the situation is, quote, nowhere near resolved. We will continue to monitor this, of course, in Philadelphia, and we'll bring you any news conferences or developments as we get them. Now we're going to turn to the other top stories of the day. U.S. stocks took a steep dive Wednesday amid new warning signs of uncertainty in the economy. Interest rates on the bond market dropped to levels that have been a past indicator of an oncoming recession. Don Daler is on Wall Street with the latest. The symbol of Wall Street might be a steadfast bull, but traders reacted like skittish colts to today's news. A key signal that a recession may well be just around the corner sent the Dow plunging 800 points. Diane Swank, chief economist at Grant Thornton, says investors are fleeing stocks for safety in bonds. The easiest way to understand it is that basically long-term rates, anything that's out there that's more than a year or two years or three years or four years, those rates are now lower than short-term rates. It means you're not willing to place a bet on the future. And that's the fear, is that this could actually trigger a credit crisis. But it doesn't mean a recession is imminent. Historically, it could take 18 to 24 months to arrive, if at all. In this case, a recession could come right around the 2020 election. The other factor influencing the market sell-off, a global economic slowdown. China, embroiled in a trade war with the U.S., reported its slowest growth figures since 1992. Japan's economic growth decreased to 1.8 percent. 
Germany's economy shrank with exports lagging, and much of Europe followed suit, with production plunging the most in three years as its economic expansion cools. This will undoubtedly put pressure on the Federal Reserve and its chairman, Jerome Powell, to cut interest rates. Powell has been the target of withering criticism from President Trump over the Fed's monetary policy. Tanya. Don Daler from Wall Street, thank you. And Yahoo Finance anchor Adam Shapiro joins us now. Welcome, Adam. Great to have you with us. So what exactly happened Wednesday to make investors so fearful? There were three key things. First, you heard Don talk about it in his report, Tanya, and that was the inversion of the two-year Treasury note and the 10-year. And when the 10-year yield falls below the two-year, as he pointed out, it signals we could go into recession in roughly two years. That's happened seven times in the past, and seven times after it happened, the U.S. economy slipped into recession. So that was one key factor. The other key factors were the slowdown in China. Unemployment now higher in China than had been expected, and that's because of the U.S., China trade war, but it was Germany. Germany's GDP actually contracted in June. And that's a problem because that's the fourth largest economy essentially in the world. It is the driver of the European, um, the Euro Eurozone. So that was very troubling to investors. And that sent everyone into fear mode and you saw the sell off. And then we had that sharp decline, which comes just after President Trump announces he is will push back additional tariffs on Chinese goods. Now, this helped the stock market see an upswing on Tuesday. Why wasn't that enough to have a lasting impact? Because the, the, the forces that were buying stock yesterday were looking at the headline. And the headline was tariffs delayed till December. But when you read what was going to still go into tariff for being taxed, essentially, on September 1st, it was something like almost 80 percent of goods like clothing, bicycles, uh, some of the toys that you might be buying for Christmas, they're still going to be taxed come September 1st. And we actually spoke with Rick Heffelbein, who is the uh, president and CEO of one of the trade lobbying groups for retailers, the American Apparel Footwear Association. There's no reprieve here. These manufacturers of clothing and the goods you might want to buy people for back to school or for Christmas and Hanukkah and the holidays that are coming up, you're going to be paying more for that because they're going to be subject to a 10 percent tariff, tariff in, in roughly two weeks. All right. So that's that's happening. And President Trump tweeted Wednesday, the trade war with China, though, is not the problem. He says, quote, our problem is with the Fed. So what role exactly has the Federal Reserve played in what some economists are predicting now could be this impending economic crisis? There's a grain of truth in what the president said. The Fed has, a, has admitted that it misjudged what it was doing last year when it raised interest rates. But they've corrected that mistake. And you heard Jay Powell say as much. So they are now on a path of trying to sustain the economic recovery. And make no mistake, our economy is still growing. So when the president says, blame the Fed, blame the Fed, he wants the Fed to cut interest rates. And again, Don talked about that in his report. If the Fed were to cut interest rates in September at their next meeting, that would lower those shorter term maturities. That would lower the yield on those so that you wouldn't have this inversion that has everyone so panicked. But that wouldn't necessarily avert a recession. That would just make people who trade in bonds very happy. But, Adam, but it's not a panacea. Can you explain something to me, though? I thought that the Fed was supposed to raise interest rates when the economy expanded and when the economy was strong, which I thought that it was. So uh, what did what the Fed miscalculate do. then? Uh, they, they miscalculated the global economy and its impact uh -huh. on the U.S. economy. And remember that we are, this is all still uh, a territory that we've never been in before. The, the measures that the Fed under Bernanke enacted in 2008 to save us from the Great Recession and the calamity we were facing, we still live with those actions. We've not emerged from them. The volatility that we see in the stock market right now, the stock market was much more volatile before 2007, 2008. We would have ups and downs. It's not these tremendous swings, but you would have ups and downs. But when they flooded the market with easy money and it did have some positive effects, people got complacent. You could, you could invest without having to worry about where that money was going in some cases. They call them zombie companies that should have been put out of business, but because they can get cheap financing are still out there. So in a normal world, and that normal world has not been around for about 12 years, yes, the Fed would be raising interest rates because our economy is strong. But it's not normal. And you see that when we talk about wages. When we got the labor numbers, yes, wages are growing, but not at the pace 
that we would have in recoveries in the past. And the recoveries in the first part of this century, in the early 2000s, when our economy was growing, you saw wage growth around 4 and 5 percent. Wage growth right now is around 3 percent. And that's pretty strong compared to what it was just a few months ago when it was suffering around 2.6, 2.7 percent. So nothing is the same as it was before the Great Recession. All new rules being written here. So, you know, in your opinion, then, do you see the U.S. falling into a recession? And if so, in your opinion, what could be done to prevent it? I don't share my opinion, but I will share the opinions of, of smarter people than me. I know we bring these analysts on. We keep hearing people say that there's no need for the U.S. to go into recession. One, we're at full employment, essentially. Two, we are in an inflationary environment that just doesn't exist. I mean, there isn't inflation. What the Fed is really more concerned about is disinflation and deflation. So when we bring analysts on, they see at least another year to two years of growth, and we have it. We know that GDP is growing somewhere around one and a half to maybe, if we're lucky, two and a half percent. But falling into recession is something that we will know after the fact. And this, this inversion that got everyone upset at 6 a.m. this morning, that's just one of many data points that you have to pay attention to. Right now, we're not in recession. The analysts that come on our program and talk about how to invest say, look, they're still going to be upside. And I, I want to quote one of them because I'm like you. I'm a 401k person, and I do it passively. I'm in an index fund. But we brought on um, Ann Lester, who is from J.P. Morgan Chase, and she is in charge of the, the head of retirement solutions over at JPM. And, and she said, look, don't look at your 401k. These ups and downs can give you, you know, some indigestion. But over the long term, they tend to, you know, level out.